What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is a story where Issei was the first Nephilim in the universe. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations. Now, let's get into part 2. In the underworld, everyone was getting ready to watch a duel that no one knew what to expect. Up in the VIP area, there was several people there. Including the four great Satans. There was their respective families as well. There was Lord Phoenix and his wife there as well. As well as Azazel. Also there was Kai and Kalwarner and Raynor too. However most of the devils didn't like the fact that there were fallen angels in there. They all were about to watch a fight that would shock everyone. So this kid thinks he can beat my son. Lord Phoenix said amused. Sir Zichas shook his head at how arrogant the devil was being. I don't know, this boy may surprise you after all. Sir Afal said suddenly. Sir Zichas had a grin on his face as Lord Phoenix looked appalled. How can you say that? He is an unknown, along with those filth he calls his friends and family. He screeched aloud. Azazel suddenly looked interested. How did it come to be that two members of my faction suddenly grouped with him? He asked curiously. Everyone looked at the two girls as they looked away from all the attention they were getting. The say was always one help those in need, as long as they didn't crow SS any lines. Kai spoke up suddenly. Lord Phoenix laughed aloud. So offensive her. You really think someone like would win against the heir to the Phoenix clan? He mocked. Everyone who knew of Issei's identity just shook their heads and watched the screen as the duel was about to begin. Scene break with Issei. As Issei stared at his opponent impassively, he started to think about how he should fight this foe. The regeneration was the biggest obstacle, so that left him with two options. Either brute strength and beat him into the ground so bad that he couldn't at all at once, or attack him continuously, so that his mind wouldn't be able to keep up. He was brought out of his thoughts as Riser started to laugh loudly. I can't believe you actually showed up. You have no idea what you're getting into. He said arrogantly. Issei just shook his head. I could say the same to you. He muttered. Riser continued to laugh. Do you really think you can take on the mighty Phoenix? He asked aloud. Issei snorted. I believe you have no idea what you're about to face. Issei said aloud. Riser sneered as his pyrokinetic wings came alive. Let's see you try. He shouted. Issei just shook his head again, he looked to Riser to see him charging. Issei's eyes widened as he saw Riser moving faster than he thought he could. It seemed this fight he was going to need to take it seriously. He quickly rolled out of the way as Riser's flame-coated fist connected with the ground. I'll say this, you are fast. Issei said. He then jumped back as Riser charged again. However, not fast enough. He mocked. Riser was starting to get angry, he stood up and looked at Issei. You may be able to dodge my punches, however you won't be able to dodge this. He roared. Suddenly the flames around him grew brighter as they grew in size, before anyone knew it, four fire torrents had been launched towards Issei. Issei wasn't expecting this kind of assault this early on in the fight, it was actually pretty smart to do. Covering all directions to make him not be able to dodge any of them. He had one option to avoid this, however it was going to take a good bit of energy. He knew Riser didn't make those flames at a low temperature either. So there was only one thing he could do. Up in the VIP room the spectators were surprised to see the fight. Lord Phoenix smirked seeing the fire coming towards Issei, as it finally hit the target, it was a raging inferno of flames. I told you guys, this boy was no match for Riser. He said arrogantly. Everyone watched with bated breath. Kai knew Issei was fine. The Keno was looking worriedly at the raging flames, she didn't know what she truly felt for the son of Lucifer. However, she knew when he said those words to her that day on the roof, it had sparked something deep within her, and it hadn't gone away yet. The other people were looking worriedly as well, they thought this boy might have been ended already. It was when Seraphil noticed something, did she speak up? What is that? She asked suddenly. Everyone looked to where she was pointing, it looked like frost underneath the flames, and it was spreading. Eventually it spread so far that even Riser noticed it and backed up. I smirked at seeing it. So that's what he's doing. He suddenly spoke up. Everyone turned to him for an explanation. He chuckled and started to explain. Issei has various types of magic he can use, he is using ice magic to create a dome around him of sorts, while expanding the ice as well to snuff out the fire. He explained. Seraphol was suddenly interested even more in this boy, first lightning, now ice. She quickly thought. Even so, it won't help him a single bit, the flames will eventually melt it. Lord Phoenix said foolishly. I laughed like crazy after hearing that. Everyone turned to him as he calmed down and continued. I doubt that, Issei's ice magic can create ice of various temperatures. Even absolute zero. He said. Everyone's eyes widened when they heard absolute zero. H how? 
To create something like that requires immense of control over that element. Seraphil asked astonished. I chuckled again and explained. He has devoted most of his time to his individual abilities and improving them beyond normal capabilities. He simply said. Everyone widened their eyes at the implication of his statement, he was holding back. Holding back a fucking ton. They all watched as the flames finally dispersed and what was left underneath them, true enough there was a dome of pure ice with it spreading out in a circle. Everyone was in awe of it. Suddenly they could see a red glow coming from the inside of the ice dome, they watched in awe as it grew brighter and finally exploded the whole dome apart with a burst of demonic energy. What was that? Akeno asked suddenly. I looked the girl for a moment and took in her worried face, his face suddenly got a grin on it as he figured out this was the girl who was starting to get through to Issei. Issei has learned to seal parts of his energy to release at a moment's notice. He can do this with large amounts to create a burst effect. He explained. They all turned to the duel to see something that shocked everyone, Kai looked down as he saw it as well. Using the demonic energy to break all the ice, it caused his shirt to explode. Revealing all that was underneath it. They could see scars covering his torso and arms, the body was carved out of pain. The Kendo almost had tears seeing the proof alone of his pain, Serzichas couldn't even fathom what this single boy went through. No one had any words, Cal Werner and Raynor looked to Kai to see him sighing and closing his eyes. What are all those from? Raynor screeched. Everyone turned to him as he spoke softly. All his life, he has devoted himself to training. Fueled by his own rage towards his two species, it caused a whiplash effect and he pushed himself beyond his own limits. These are the results of his own training, the training he put you two through was nothing compared to what he put his body through, it took pure determination to keep going. Any normal person would have gave in on the first day. He said. Everyone turned to the fight suddenly as Issei started to speak in an apathetic tone, completely uncaring anymore. I've underestimated you, I will not do it again. This is when I draw the line, no more playing around. He said loudly. Everyone widened their eyes as they heard him. Riser didn't seem to take the warning in his tone. I see you've managed to survive that attack, even if you have some incredible ice abilities, this is the end. He shouted. His flaming wings grew brighter as he sped towards Issei with his fist reeled back. He was moving faster, Issei mused he was using his wings as a speed boost. However Issei wasn't going to let that get to him at all. He quickly sidestepped the fist as Riser went soaring past him. You may have increased your speed, but it is nothing compared to my ability to dodge in my own reaction time. Issei said quickly. Riser was just getting angrier and angrier that this boy was making a fool of him. Die. He shouted as he charged again. Issei chuckled and quickly summoned his demonic sword and swiftly sliced the arm off as Riser came close to him, Riser instantly grabbed the stump of his arm as the flames roared to life. He laughed as his arm healed instantaneously. Even if you can dodge, you can't beat the immortal phoenix. He shouted arrogantly. Issei just shook his head. You phoenixes aren't immortal at all. Not even the gods themselves are immortal. No one is truly immortal, everyone who has said they were immortal has found out otherwise. You in your case have your regeneration. The simple way to kill you would be holy elements, but I don't want to do that. There are other ways to kill a bird, and you're about to feel my true power. Issei said suddenly. Everyone was silent after hearing that, up in the VIP area, Lord Phoenix was laughing his ass off. This boy thinks he can kill a phoenix? He asked foolishly. Seraphil just shook her head. I think you should watch the battle and you will see your own limits. She said. He shut up after that and turned back to the fight with a smirk. Everyone was confused as to why Issei didn't end it, he kept letting Riser regenerate his limbs he would cut off, and the cycle would continue. Hi. What's Issei's deal? What's he planning? Kalwerner asked suddenly. Everyone looked at Kai as he looked and thought. It seems that Issei is using the Phoenix's regeneration to his advantage. He mused. Seraphil didn't know what he meant by that. What do you mean? That would be counteractive wouldn't it? She asked quickly. He nodded then began to explain. For a normal fight yes, however this is Issei we're talking about. Look at the battlefield, he was using the phoenix's regeneration, due to the high intensity of the heat it gives off to melt the ice and produce a ton of water. He explained. Halwerner and Raynor's eyes widened. So he is gonna use that? They asked quickly. I nodded. Seraphil wondered what was going on. What's he planning? She asked. I chuckled and explained again. He is going to use the water as a conductor, with his lightning he could fry the man with a well-placed bolt of lightning. He explained. Everyone's eyes widened for the umpteenth time that day as they watched the fight continue. As Riser charged foolishly again, Issei was almost ready to prepare his attack. Quickly dodging another punch he lunged and shoved his sword through Riser's shoulder, he then pivoted on his foot and threw him over his shoulder and onto the ground. 
He pulled his sword out of the down body of Riser, Issei smirked, as he saw the flames come alive again, as Riser started to regenerate. He looked around to see enough water for his plant to work. He was suddenly brought out of his thoughts as Riser spoke. Dry all you want, I'll just regenerate any damage you can dish out. He said arrogantly. Issei shook his head and chuckled. You truly are an idiot aren't you? He asked. Riser blinked, then he got furious. What? He roared. Issei looked blandly at him. You failed to take note of the area around you, there's about two to three inches of water here. He said. As he said that, everyone's eyes widened as they knew now the Kai was right and something big was coming. Yeah? What's that supposed to mean? Riser asked ignorantly. Issei raised one arm and started to speak again. A little science lesson, what conducts electricity? He mocked. Riser's face grew in horror as he watched a small black ball of lightning form on Issei's hand, it started to grow steadily until it was the size of a softball. With one swift and decisive motion, Issei clenched his hand around the sphere and aimed it at the ground. A large lightning bolt struck the surface of the water and started to spread like a wildfire. Riser didn't have a chance to escape from it. He quickly fell on the ground with a charred body, however only a few flames covered him for a few seconds, but he still couldn't move. What? Why can't I move? My regeneration should be working. He shouted. Issei chuckled and walked up to him. Your regeneration would only apply to physical wounds such as cuts, severed limbs and stuff like that. However the stuff on the inside doesn't get affected by your regeneration, so you have to regenerate those things naturally. To keep it short and sweet, your regeneration has limits. It has just found its limit your nerves are fried from the inside, my lightning bolt made sure of that. He said quickly. Up in the VIP room, Lord Phoenix was horrified at the scene before him. H how is this possible? He asked dumbstruck. Seraphal laughed loudly. That boy has just proved your own clan's arrogance on thinking you're immortal, he just proved you wrong. Maybe that will tune down your arrogance. She said as she laughed. Serzichas nodded as she spoke. They had expected this outcome, however they didn't know that something even bigger was coming. Back at the fight, the two of them just stared at each other. Riser was in disbelief at how easily he lost. How does someone like you have this kind of strength? He shouted furiously. Issei shook his head and spoke. All you brats think you're top shit just because you got everything handed to you on a fucking silver platter. That isn't strength, no true strength is gained from blood, sweat, tears and pain. All I know about my parents are their names. I'm a fucking orphan. The closest thing I have to a parent is my guardian, and yet I didn't get anything handed to me. I earned it all through years of gruesome training, this body is a testament to that fact. He shouted in fury. Everyone was silent as they heard him. Riser just blinked and started to laugh like crazy. Up in the VIP area, Kalwerner and Rainer were sad as they heard Issei, but it soon turned into fury as they heard Riser's laugh. Ai's face darkened as he knew if Riser were to say a single thing wrong, it would be over. They all listened as Riser started to speak. I refuse to believe a nobody like you has this kind of strength. You should just crawl back into the hole you came from peasant. No wonder your parents gave you up. They most likely didn't love you at all. He sneered. The whole arena became eerily silent as the words of Riser sunk in, Kai paled as he knew what Issei would do now. He quickly stood up. You have to stop this now before it's too late. He shouted quickly. Everyone turned to him in alarm as he said that. Lord Phoenix was the one to speak up. Why stop now? It's obvious Riser is just getting started. He said foolishly. I shook his head as Seraphal spoke up. What is going on? Why does the fight need to be stopped? She asked quickly. I sighed and began to explain. I'm sure you know of Issei's rage and its capabilities. He asked quickly. Suddenly everyone who knew of Issei's true identity faces grew in horror. What does this have to do with anything? Lord Phoenix asked arrogantly. I looked at him deadly serious. There are very few things that make Issei go into a blind fit of rage, one of those things just happened to be talking bad about his parents. His parents are a very complicated subject to him, and with Riser saying that they didn't love him. He basically just forfeited his own life. Kai explained. Everyone was shocked. Ah. There's nothing that boy can do that could kill my son. Lord Phoenix said foolishly. Alwerner and Rainer walked up. How bad will it affect him? They asked. I shook his head and spoke up. It will be a massacre, we're talking barely any restraint on his demonic form. Riser won't be able to withstand what he unleashed. He said. Suddenly Akeno spoke up. Anything we can do to stop him? She asked. I just shook his head, they were about to suggest something else when they felt it. A massive release of energy. What is that? Lord Phoenix screeched. I glared at him. That's the beast your son has unleashed upon himself. He said. 
everyone looked to see a gigantic swirl of black and red energy, Riser was knocked back by the massive amount of energy that was being released. Suddenly everyone heard screams of rage from inside the swirl of energy. As the energy finally disappeared, they were shocked at what they saw. Issei in his half-demonic form. That's Issei. Seraphol screeched. I nodded. Everyone looked at the newly partial transformed Issei, he had the same demonic hands they'd seen before, but it was on one side. Half of his body was like that, he had one horn atop his head in the form. It seemed he would have two of them when he went full demonic. What is my son unleashed? Lord Phoenix asked horrified. I looked at him seriously. His worst nightmare. He said simply. They all turned suddenly as a demonic voice interrupted their ears. I'll kill you. It was a say, but it was more demonic and animalistic. Riser feared for his life now, he was suddenly picked up and slammed against the ground several times. He was then launched into the air, and a massive bolt of lightning came towards him. As he fell down, his gut was met with Issei's demonic fist. It sent him flying into a pillar. He was already coughing up blood as Issei came towards him. A stay away. He screamed. However that didn't do anything as he was grabbed again. You want mercy. You don't deserve it. Issei roared. Riser's pummeled body was slammed mercilessly on the ground several times before he was chucked in the air again, this time he was hit with a roundhouse kick, sending him flying in the other direction. Back in the spectator room, everyone was watching horrified at the destruction of Issei's anger. What do we do? Seraphil asked suddenly. No one had any answers. The Keno had tears coming out of her eyes at seeing Issei. She quickly rushed wanting to hug him and calm him down, however she was held back by Serzich's. Don't, you would only become a casualty. He said. I suddenly looked at the girl. Let her go, she may be the only one who can bring him back. He said. Alwerner and Rainer eyes widened. I thought you said that no one would be able to do that. Rainer asked. I chuckled then explained. Yes I did, however it seems this girl is the one who was the cause of Issei's recent behavior. She may be able to calm him down. He explained. They widened their eyes as Akeno spread her own wings and flew down to the arena. Everyone else hoped that she would be able to bring him out. Akeno herself still didn't understand her feelings for Issei yet, however she knew she cared for him. It also hurt her to see him like this. As she landed behind him, she quickly dashed towards him and gripped him in a bear hug. At first nothing happened. They all watched with bated breath. Issei. Please listen to me, this man isn't worth the effort it would take to kill him. I know you're in pain, come back where everyone is waiting for you, so we can help you. She shouted with tears in her eyes. Suddenly Issei moved, and he collapsed on his knees. If anyone were in front of him, they would see a tear roll down his face. Suddenly something happened, the demonic energy was replaced with its opposite. Holy. The Keno had to force herself not to let go and get away, suddenly his wings released, and everyone was shocked. The wings were different though. The angel ones didn't have a speck of red on them, they were all a deep blue, and the devil ones seemed to take on the appearance of fallen wings mixed with dragons. They were covered in a deep blue glow as well. However that wasn't what shocked them. It was the matching halo floating above his head. Silence, that's all that was currently there as Issei stood up. It was thick as everyone breathed in what they saw before them. Up in the spectator room, some people were obviously shocked. For a number of reasons, one was the Satans, they never had seen the angel form yet. The other people who didn't know about Issei's identity were livid. What is that? Lord Phoenix screeched. Zerafo looked to Serzich's as he was the one who was needed to take control of the situation, everyone knew now that there was something wrong, and it was only a matter of time. The boy is an angel. Azazel asked confused. I was the one to speak up. No, he isn't just an angel. He said. Everyone looked to him as he explained. He is a Nephilim. He said softly. Everyone that didn't know the truth was completely and utterly shocked beyond belief, they had no idea what kind of power the boy could unleash. Lord Phoenix was pale as he realized this boy could have ended the fight much earlier. He was also pissed. Why is he still alive? He shouted loudly. I glared at him as he spoke. Seraphol took this moment to speak up. This story is complicated, only a select few knew about it. That included me, Serzich's and our sister's peerages. The angels Gabriel and Michael too. We needed to treat the situation as carefully as we could. She said quickly. Azazel suddenly remembered something from long ago, he wondered if this boy was him. He's the other child of him right? He asked carefully. Seraphol nodded numbly. Wow, Riser is lucky to be alive then. I wouldn't want to piss at that boy then. He muttered. Lord Phoenix looked appalled at him, he spoke up quickly after hearing him. I should go down there and end that monster and save us all the trouble. He shouted indignantly. Everyone glared at him as he spoke. Seraphol was about to speak up, however a new voice cut in. 
I highly doubt you could, my power is beyond what you can imagine. This form proves that fact. It was a say. Suddenly a squeal of surprise erupted from Akeno as they literally almost teleported there, it seemed Isane knew the damage that was caused and came here as fast as he could. She unhooked her arms from the angel himself and walked back to her friends, while ignoring the sly looks from everyone else. Everyone looked at Issei as he closed his eyes, the wings lost their glow and returned to their original state, as the halo disappeared. Everyone started to notice a change in his behavior. Usually Issei was angry and volatile, however this one was calm, however there was something else beneath the surface. His eyes showed apathy. It was like he didn't care for being here, and the point was only proved more, when he didn't even spare any glances at anyone and walked straight for the exit. Soon he just vanished, like he wasn't even there. Seraphol quickly voiced her confusion along with others. What was that about? He didn't even say anything more and just left. She said suddenly. Everyone looked suddenly to Kai as he sighed and began to explain. The Say's angel form rarely comes out, and when it does there is a reason. He started, he suddenly looked at Akeno while speaking. She quickly looked away as he continued. It is something Issei doesn't understand, so he disappears for a while. I know where he likely is, however it is times like this where he needs to be alone. These things he tends to be stubborn about and wants to figure it out on his own. He finished. Rainer and Kalwerner were suddenly interested in where he was as they heard Kai speak. Where does he go? Rainer asked. Everyone looked once again to Kai as he started to speak again. When it's like this, it's the secluded places you'd find him at. However, this might be more, if it's where I think it is, no one will find him easily. It's the training spot he chose for himself, it's very secluded as well. The harsh climate also makes it very difficult as well. He started. Everyone looked at him interested as he spoke. Where is this place? Seraphil asked suddenly. I chuckled and began to explain. Mount Fuji, the very mountain on the island of Honshu. He said. They were all shocked, he trained up there. They quickly thought. You're kidding right? Serzichas asked quickly. Even for a normal devil, the temperature up there could easily reach into the negatives. I shook his head, and that only concreted their shock. To train at altitudes like that combined with the climate of the mountain was a very dangerous combo. With Issei's own training regime, it made sense why the scars were there. Serzichas suddenly had a thought, and he wanted to know. Has Issei had any contact before with other pantheons? He asked. I nodded and began to explain. There have been a few, however it's been at least 30 years when he saw one of them. Some have trained him in their own ways, or some have noticed his large amount of power and came to test him. You could say it's hard to keep under the radar for so long, with how Issei was before. I honestly don't know how we managed to keep it out of the three factions' ears for so long. He explained. Everyone was even more interested now than ever, Issei was enigma to them mostly, so learning more about him was something that intrigued them. Also the fact he had connections to more pantheons than they thought was only more to them. Who's trained him? Kalwerner asked suddenly. I snorted at everyone's sudden interest in Issei's past, it was obvious to him they had quickly misjudged him, based on the fact of his species. A few gods here and there, nothing too major. Some simple combat training along with some situational analysis. Susanu the Shinto god of storms is one of his mentors, he's met with a few other pantheons. Some though haven't been seen in a long while. He explained. Serzichas thought about his statement for a moment. Susanu was a recent one? He asked. I nodded and began to explain. Susanu isn't a new mentor, however he was the most recent that Issei has seen lately. The others haven't been heard or seen from in a while. He said. They all thought about that for a moment. Who are his other mentors? Seraphil asked. I shook his head. It's complicated, some of them are sensitive subjects for Issei, so much that he doesn't want to talk about them. It's not my place to tell you. He said softly. It was obvious they weren't going to get any more out of Kai about that subject. When can we expect him to return? Serzichas suddenly asked. It was a serious moment in time now, Issei's identity was revealed to the whole underworld. With everyone watching the duel, it was only a matter of time before people started to wonder who his parents were, then they could put the pieces together themselves. I looked and thought for a moment. He only leaves for about a few hours at most, however it could be more. He said. Serzichas nodded. Why do you ask? Kai suddenly asked. Serzichas chuckled and spoke up. It's obvious he will need to speak to the Council of Elders, his secret is out. This duel was broadcasted, so the whole underworld will be able to put the pieces together soon. Once they do, it will only get worse. He said softly. I hummed and nodded, he agreed that was the case of the matter. Well, I'll tell him when he comes home tonight. It's been a long day, we'll be leaving now. Kai said suddenly. They all nodded and watched as the two fallen angels and Kai disappeared into a magic circle. 
in the wake of the aftermath of the duel was a ton of more questions, and they all revolved around a single person. Issei Haidu himself. Seen break unknown. High up in the air, was Issei himself. With his wings released, soaring through the air to his destination. He wore an pale expression, void of any emotion to see. It was weird, his face however, was clearly deep in thought, as it was clearly etched on his face. He was clearly conflicted about it. His angel form. It was never really the form he used, it only came out in times of great distress or sadness, then why did it come out when she hugged him? He quickly thought. He shook his head and started to descend, soon he saw a secluded spot he was looking for. Like Kai said, it was a part of Mount Fuji, however, he didn't want to go to his usual training spot. Which was pretty much near the crater of the mountain itself, he knew it was dangerous sometimes to be up there for long periods of time training non-stop. However, that didn't stop him. Not one bit. He remembered how he trained up there, the grueling hours. Breaking bones over and over again, only to have them healed quickly by his angel form. Which was the only thing he really used it for, so that he could press forwards. His scars were a reminder of his past, and what it meant to him. He would never forget it, however he didn't know that it wasn't going to matter anymore very soon. His world was about to be changed. He quickly started to land when he saw the spot he was looking for, it was a clearing covered in frost with a large waterfall. It was very secluded. No one would likely find him here. He quickly found a rock in the river and sat on it and started to breath deeply. He was meditating, this, he found was the best way to clear his mind and focus on what mattered. This way, he didn't get off track easily. He was thinking about her, and why she had that effect on him. To be able to stop him dead center from his wrath was something to be interested in, not to mention the fact she not only stopped him, but the fact she also was able to make his angel form come out. It was something shocking to him. He admitted that there was something about her that intrigued him to no end. His train of thought was brought back to the day on the roof when she first hugged him, it was a very uncommon feeling he got from it. There was no doubt in his mind that he didn't hate it. No it was the opposite, he already knew that. It was that fact that made him conflicted, his younger self would have instantly decimated anyone who tried to do that, back when he was extremely vengeful, and his hatred was at its max. However, that was his old him, and it made him think of how much he was changing. Whether or not that was good or bad, that was yet to be seen. But the recent events of the duel, it only concreted that fact more in his mind. If it was his younger self. Riser would be six feet under by now, and anyone who got in his way would be too. He quickly groaned and jumped off the rock, his clashing thoughts were too much for him to meditate. He needed to take a different route to think through things. That was training. It was time to get back into shape. He really had let himself slip in the last year or two, it was time once again to train again. His training methods were much more brutal than what the two girls had gone through with him. His training was specifically designed to make someone who didn't have the proper will and determination to give up after the first day. This was his way, and it proved with its results. However, it was daunting and a very arduous regime. Before he knew it, he was already flying higher towards the mountain to begin. Eventually he found the area he was looking for, it was a rundown cabin, obvious void of anyone there. However, that wasn't what he was looking for. It was what was behind it. A sloped part of the mountain that stretched up about 100 feet or so. Beside several trees were boulders about 5 to 10 feet in diameter. He remembered how he would either drag them up the slope, tethered with a rope, and only using his bare strength to get them up there. He would also push them with brute force. That was what he was going to do today. He quickly walked over towards the nearest one and stopped right before it, he knew it wasn't going to be easy starting out again. With a quick motion, a large amount of demonic energy burst out as his legs turned demonic. He was using the demonic part of his feet to dig into the ground for more traction. With his feet planted firmly in the ground, he let out grunt as he started to push. About 20 feet up the slope, he felt the straining of his muscles on his wrist start to take effect. However, that didn't stop him at all. He only pushed harder as the pain fueled him more. After about another 30 feet up the mountain, the straining in his wrists finally exploded with a ton of pain. It was only a little bit more, and finally he let go, and the boulder tumbled down the slope and crashed right into the cabin. He sat on the slope for a good minute, just controlling his breathing. Eventually a blue glow covered him for a few moments, as his muscles started to repair themselves. He was healing himself. He knew he needed to take it slow first, healing himself like this used a ton of energy, and he needed to conserve as much as he could to avoid exhaustion. He needed to increase his reserves as well. However, that was for a later date. Before he knew it, he was already down at the base and started to push another boulder up the slope. Eventually he got tired again and healed himself. However, he was done for the day. The duel with Riser, plus all the confliction he had just wore him out physically and mentally. 
quickly making a magic circle and hopping in it, he quickly reappeared in the living room of the house. He instantly surprised Kai and the two girls who were sitting at the counter. Issei? Are you okay? Kai asked suddenly. I knew by the state of Issei that it was obvious he was starting his training again. The sweat down his face proved it even more. Yeah I'm okay. Issei replied. I knew that was a lie, at least partly. He knew where he was and what he was doing, and it only proved it to him when Issei didn't even pay the girls any attention whatsoever and trudged up the stairs. Rainer and Kalwerner seemed to get annoyed by how Issei just passed right over them, however it was when Kai sighed did they turn to him. Don't be mad at Issei, he's just extremely worn out. Both mentally and physically. He started. They both didn't understand what he meant. What do you mean he's extremely worn out? Last time we saw him, he was barely exerting any sort of stress on his body when he faced Riser. Kalwerner asked suddenly. I looked at her for a moment before speaking up. Yes that's true, however it is the saddening fact that he has began to take up his training again. I can already tell that he pushed himself really hard today. He said softly. Brainer quickly gasped, Kalwerner looked shocked. Yes, it is the very same training I told you about that caused his scars. Don't try to convince Issei otherwise, you'd only make him annoyed. I feel like there is more though, I think Issei is starting to change. This change can be seen subtly, but nonetheless it's there. He said suddenly. Brainer looked at him quizzically and spoke up. What do you mean? She asked. I chuckled and began to explain. That girl, the same one who was able to make the angel form appear. I believe there is something about her that Issei is drawn to, whether or not he knows it yet. However, I know that is what he was thinking about. I wouldn't be surprised if she was able to breach his walls for good soon, she already did get through once. He explained. Brainer didn't really believe him, Issei seemed his normal self. However, even she couldn't deny there was some things that made her think twice about it. Are you sure? She asked. I nodded and began to explain. I've raised Issei all his life, so I know his patterns of behavior. I'm seeing patterns that are completely new to me. He said quickly. Both of them looked to the stairs as they wondered what was going on in Issei's head, if there was one thing they knew. The next few days would be the start of something they needed to keep a closer eye on, if what Kai said was true. Then more changes were bound to happen, and in turn they would show in his behavior. They just had to wait and see. It was the day after the duel, and everyone still had it concreted in their brains on how one-sided the fight really was. Issei opened his eyes to see the spinning ceiling fan above him. He quickly turned to his clock and saw he had another hour till it was time to get to school. Quickly getting up, he slowly walked towards the bathroom to start to get ready. He was still fatigued from him starting his training again, he expected it too. Even if he could heal broken bones and injuries, it didn't mean that energy and stamina would be restored. No that was something he had to recover on his own time. He recently had been thinking about Akeno, he admitted it to himself that she was unique and what it meant to him. He knew he needed to talk to her and pick her brain a bit before he decided his course of action. The part of him knew if everything went well and he decided to do what he originally thought. There would be no going back whatsoever if he was to let her inside, past his walls. That meant she had the potential to change everything he ever considered. He wasn't opposed to change either. Change was what drove people further, however it was the same fact of change that scared him. Like everyone says, everyone fears the unknown. Whether it be devil, fallen angel, angel or humans. Everyone fears what they do not know or understand. It is simple as that. However, Issei wasn't really afraid of the unknown. No he anticipated it and grinned at the thought of it. It was a challenge for him to overcome the prospect of what was to come. Like overcoming the obstacles that were laid ahead. He would do just that. Before he knew it, both Raynor and Kalwerner had already were awakened downstairs. It was obvious that they didn't know what to think of Issei's new behavior, however even they couldn't deny something was amiss. they just have to wait and see. Before any one of them knew it, it was time to head to school. None of them knew what today would hold. As they arrived in front of the gates, Issei instantly knew they were being watched. It was obvious to him that the devil saw his power and was no doubt weary of it. He chuckled on the inside, they had no reason to fear him, as long as they didn't provoke him. If they did, then he would tear them apart. However, he felt something else. It wasn't fear or nervousness. He looked up to see none other than Akeno, looking at him with an intense stare. Like she was trying to see through every wall and mask he wore to get to the truth. It was interesting to Issei to say the least, for her to want to find out what was underneath him was something unheard of. At first he may have hated that idea, but now, he didn't really care anymore. So many things have changed, and this girl was something new and intriguing to him. His thoughts however, were abruptly interrupted as he suddenly got tunnel vision and very dizzy. Quickly falling on one knee he gasped for breath as everyone around him saw it. Akeno saw it from atop the roof and wondered what was going on. 
She knew he wasn't faking it, and a part of her was worried. However, she didn't know yet just what he meant to her. She planned to talk to him again to get a better feel for her feelings, and if they were genuine, she would act upon them. That's when the two girls rushed to him and picked him up. Are you alright? She heard. She saw Issei sigh and wave his hand, Akeno narrowed her eyes as she saw his expression. He was hiding something. Just help me walk, I will be fine. He said quickly. Both Kalawarner and Raynor took an arm and put it around their shoulders. How stupid can I be? How could I forget? Issei cursed himself. Akeno saw him shaking his head, her interest was only increased as the bell rang. Scene break lunch. Issei was cursing himself the whole day for his stupidity. He knew what was wrong and how serious it was. In short, he had too much energy. His powers were balanced, they had to be. Or else the consequences were severe, and this was the start of them. In his fight with Riser, he went half demonic and flooded his system with demonic energy, leaving his energy unbalanced. He usually needed to release the energy in order to balance it out. However, he forgot to. That's why he found himself once again atop the room in a meditating position. He knew he couldn't release it all at once, so the whole day he was leaking small amounts, nothing harmful though. He now was going to filter the rest out to balance it out. However, before he could even do anything, he heard the door behind him open. He was expecting her to come, honestly he knew she would come. Akeno stared at him for a long minute before walking up to him. I knew you'd come to find me. He said quickly. Issei stood up and stretched, it was obvious he wasn't going to be able to release the rest of his energy that needed to be. The moment Issei turned around to see Akeno, her eyes widened as she saw his features. He was pale, almost like he was sickly. What happened to you? She quickly asked, worried. She was worried, for someone like Issei to suddenly show up to school like this, it was something to be worried about all right. It's kind of complicated. He shrugged. Akeno snickered and looked at him. Well we got all of lunch to talk, so tell me what's going on. She said quickly. Issei looked at her and chuckled, but nonetheless nodded. A start, what do you know of how my power exactly works? I don't think you ever really heard of it. He started. Akeno shook her head and replied. Not that much, besides the fact that you are a Nephilim. She said. Issei nodded and started to speak. Well I'll start with this, my body is basically reacting like an immune system to overexposure of energy, and this is the result. He said quickly. The Kendall looked surprised at that, and worried at the same time. What do you mean overexposure? She asked quickly. Issei sighed and replied to her. My power has to be balanced, the demonic and holy energies ratio to be exact. When one is too high, this is the result. Well this is the demonic's result. It's corrosive and makes me sick, weak, and tired. When the fight with Riser peaked and I went into my half form, I flooded my system, and I forgot to release my energy to balance it back out. So today, I've been releasing small harmless amounts, I'm sure you noticed it, a few traces of small demonic energy. Whiffs here and there. Basically my body is literally trying to get rid of the energy by itself, but it can't. That's why it's like an immune system, when I'm sick, it usually means my energy is out of whack and unbalanced. He explained. Akendo gasped and widened her eyes, and she digested the information that was told to her. It made sense, demonic and holy energies didn't mix, and with him being both species, it was expected for them to have to be balanced, or they would clash with each other. Slowly, her feelings started to become clear to her, however, she wasn't totally 100% sure yet. That's sad to hear, what's it like? She asked suddenly. Issei was confused by what she said. What do you mean? He asked. She sighed and spoke up in a soft tone. What's it like to be a part of two opposing species, and knowing that you don't really have a place? I know some what it feels like, I was outcasted by my own family for having fallen blood. She said. Issei widened his eyes after hearing her question, he wasn't expecting that at all. He quickly sighed and sat down. I'll be honest, it's tough. You're right when you say that I don't really have a place. Both devils and angels alike despise my existence, and because of that I'll never be accepted by them. That's all I really wanted honestly, however I knew it was a futile wish. He said softly. The Kendo was thrown for a loop again, to think there was so much despair rooted in Issei. It baffled her to no end, something needed to happen. Her feelings were concreted now. She decided then, that she would do her best to uncover the real Issei. She wasn't about to rush this either, she needed to ease her way and slowly get Issei to realize it himself. Issei was shocked beyond belief as Akeno grabbed him and wrapped her arms around him, pulling him into embrace. Don't say that, there are tons of people who accept you, including me. You're not alone. She said softly. Issei didn't know what to say, she just kept shocking him more and more. The only thing he could think to do was just sigh and accept what was happening, it's not like he didn't want her hugging him. No it was the opposite, he already accepted that. 
It was just the fact, she kept surprising him more and more. She would surprise him even more soon. Thank you. He said softly. She nodded and pulled away, but she stopped a bit. He wondered what was going on, he felt her leave his personal space, since his eyes were closed, he couldn't see what she was doing. That's when he felt something press against his cheek. His eyes flew open and his mouth was agape, a kennel looked for any signs of hate, rage or rejection in his features. It was evident by his blush that those weren't present. The kendo gave a bright smile as Issei looked up at her, it seemed she made some progress. Issei on the other hand was shell-shocked, he watched Akendo's retreating form with a slight smile and a blush. It was obvious now to him, she didn't just interest him. However, he wasn't ready yet. He needed to clear the air a bit and sort his feelings out before anything happened between them. For now he just sat back down in his meditating position and started to balance his energy again. He needed to make sure that it was balance for what was to come in the near future. He needed to be ready. Scene break evening. Issei found himself walking home currently, with Kalawarner and Raynor by his side. They looked at him worriedly, however, a part of them knew something happened again today during lunch. It was obvious by the far-off looks and sudden blushes at random times, like he was recalling a memory over and over again. Issei cared to explain why this morning you were extremely sick and now you look to have just a minor flu? Raynor asked quickly. Kalawarner turned to him as well, both of them wanted to know. That was a given, so he sighed and began to explain how his power worked and how it needed to be balanced. Needless to say, they were shocked. To think something like that was possible to them was unheard of. So let me get this right. Your holy and demonic energies need to be balanced, or you become sick until you release the energy needed to balance it back out. Kalawarner asked suddenly. Issei nodded. Both of them widened their eyes, how could he forget to do something that important? They both thought incredulously. Before any one of them knew it, they had walked in the front door and saw Kai sitting at the counter as usual. The moment he saw Issei though, he stood up hurriedly. Ice. What happened? He asked quickly. Issei sighed and spoke up. Nothing Kai, just overexposure of energy that I forgot to release. He said. I sighed and shook his head, inside he smiled. Issei wasn't one to forget something that important, so something or someone else was on his mind. Well, you know what to do. Kai said. Issei nodded and stepped back a few feet. Raynor and Kalwarner watched closely as he glowed a red demonic color, but it started to rise like it was being evaporated, soon it vanished into thin air. That was me releasing the last of the energy. He said. They nodded numbly, Issei went towards the counter to get something to eat. However, he stopped when the door was knocked on it. Everyone looked to each other, they wondered if it was someone like Seraphal, wanting information. Issei sighed and cursed to himself as he got up and walked towards the door. Opening it, he revealed three people. One was very familiar, she was Asia Argento, in her usual clothes. However, the other two made him wonder what was up. However, one girl looked familiar, but he couldn't figure it out. Issei. The light brown-haired girl said happily. Issei furrowed his eyebrows. Who are you and how do you know my name? He asked seriously. The other girl turned towards him and spoke up. My partner, Irina said you were childhood friends and that you could help us out. We need a place to stay she said in a professional voice. Issei blinked and he felt a massive headache coming on. Gabriel was up to something, wasn't she? He quickly thought. Why have Asia travel with exorcists then? But he didn't know, but he knew the moment he let them into the house, there would be a fight between Rainer, Kalwarner, and them. He also couldn't deny them either, or he'd most likely hear from Gabriel about it. Fine. He said through gritted teeth. He turned around and walked inside. We got guests. He said loudly. Both fallen angels stiffened as they saw the three women walk in the room. Ice what's going on? Kai asked quickly. The exorcists glared at the other women in the room. Fallen angels. Prepare to taste my blade. The blue-haired girl said suddenly. She quickly took out her sword and lunged at them, however, her blade edge quickly ended up grasped in Issei's hand. He could only hold it for a few seconds before he had to let go. And holy sword still affected him like any other devil. Squeezing his demonic hand as he looked at them, he went to speak up, however the same girl interrupted him. How could you catch my blade that easily? It should have completely sliced through your hand. She shouted. That's when she noticed his hand, it was in a partial transformation. Irina instantly looked to where her partner looked and gasped. Issei. You're a devil. She shouted. Issei groaned and his eyes started to twitch, this girl. He remembered her alright, he was starting to get annoyed. What? Asia squeaked out shocked. Issei sighed and spoke up. You're right, I'm part devil, but you don't need to know the rest. Devils aren't all bad. He said. All devils should purge of existence. The other girl shouted indignantly. Issei glared at her. You really think Gabriel would like to hear about this? He said quickly. 
The three women gasped and looked shell-shocked. You speak lies. Lady Gabriel would have no reason to speak with you filth. She shouted. Irina looked at the girl sharply. Zenobia silence. She said loudly. Zenobia just glared at her. Lies. Please, I've met Gabriel and Michael on several occasions. He sneered. Only Kalwerner, Rainer and Kai heard the edge in his voice when he said Michael. The other girls looked at him as he spoke. Now, you have a choice. Tell me the reason Gabriel sent you here, or I can send you back. He said loudly. They all looked at Issei as he spoke. Zenobia looked down, while Lorena spoke up. We're here to deliver the Holy Maiden to Aria's Gremory to be a part of her peerage, Gabriel said it was like a peace offering. The other reason is to get back the Excalibur's Kakabiel stole. She said. Issei sighed and palmed his forehead, these girls were dense as fuck. You do realize you have no chance of getting back those swords right. Not unless you have help. He said. Zenobia glared at him. Do you really think we can't handle ourselves? She shouted. Issei glared at her and spoke up in a cold tone. Not against a cadre class, you are nothing but ants to him. He would wipe the floor with you in a second. He said lowly. That shut her up. I suggest you request help from the Gremory princess when you bring the girl to her. He said. Zenobia went to speak up, but Issei's glare stopped her. Your arrogance will be your downfall, you can stay here for the night. Only this night though, your room is upstairs. He said quickly. He quickly turned around and walked upstairs. From downstairs, they could hear the door slam loudly. It was obvious Issei was close to blowing a fuse. They just had to hope that they wouldn't do anything foolish that would provoke him. If they did, they wouldn't know what hit them. Issei Haidu was a lot of things. He was impulsive, as well as realistic. It was his nature to look at everything and how they were for what they were. He never took things at face value, that's how it's always been. However, there are times when a different side of him shows. Even though he'd never admitted. He was slightly nervous. No, that wasn't it. He was weary for what the situation brought on him. He knew that it could have disastrous effects if it weren't handled properly. However, he knew this had to be done. He was also annoyed, and for a good reason. Being in the orc room was one thing, but being in it with a meeting between all three factions that were at each other's throats for most of their lives was something entirely different. Especially if it were to turn sour. Rainer and Kalwerner weren't as pleased to be here as well. So why have you brought these exorcists and holy maiden to us? Rhea spoke loudly. She didn't really pay any attention to the fallen, she already knew to expect them to follow Issei. Her voice had a bit of accusing tone in it. He scoffed and looked at her, he didn't give two shits what she thought about it. Listen princess, I don't want to be here as much as these people as well. However, that doesn't dispute the fact that they need help and if they don't get it. A problem could arise that could totally fuck all our days up soon. He said loudly. Bikeno, who was silent for the majority of the time they were there, spoke up. What kind of problem? She asked seriously. She wasn't mad or anything, or annoyed. However, it didn't do anything for her curiosity as to what Issei knew. Issei blinked as he felt her stare on him, their relationship wasn't figured out yet. They hadn't had a proper talk to discern their feelings on the matter. However, he already knew deep down that she was different. He also admitted to himself that he liked her and that he was attracted to her. He just didn't know where to begin though, however, he would soon find out. He sighed then started to speak up. It seems Kakabiel has stolen some of the Excaliburs. He said. They instantly widened their eyes. This is a problem. Is he and Kuo, do they know anything about his plans? Rias asked. Alwerner and Raynor shook their heads. Issei sighed and spoke up. Not likely, they weren't at the top of his list, so he wouldn't give them information about his plans. So I doubt it, I already got everything out of them a long time ago. He said. Zenovia then nodded her head. Yes, we're also here to deliver the witch to you. She said snidely. Issei sighed as he heard that. So a holy maiden makes her a witch huh? He asked suddenly. Irina looked over at her childhood friend and started wondering how much he changed. How could you say that Issei? She healed a devil. She countered. Issei shook his head at her naivety. Well, it's not the first time that your faction has made a mistake. He said suddenly. That piqued everyone's interest, the exorcists got a bit defensive though. Why do you say that? Heaven isn't as bad as the devils and their tricks. Zenobia said loudly. Issei snickered, then narrowed his eyes. Do you really think that? Every faction has its own secrets, one way or another. Some are so dark and dangerous that if they came to light, it would have disastrous effects. Heaven is no different. He said suddenly. Zenoiva narrowed her eyes and spoke up loudly. You lie. Heaven isn't as bad as you proclaim it to be. She shouted. Issei laughed loudly. Oh really? Okay then, let's start off with her. Asia Argento, a former holy maiden. 
She was accused of healing a devil, well it's true. However, she didn't know he was one. Heaven didn't do anything to help her. He said suddenly. Everyone was surprised at what he was saying. That was her fault to say. Irina spoke up. Issei looked at her dryly. Okay then, what about the Holy Sword project? He said suddenly. Silence, no words were said. How do you know about that? Riaz asked suddenly. Issei didn't listen to her and looked at the two exorcists, Zenovia laughed a bit and spoke up. That is just a myth. She said. Issei shook his head. Sure, a myth huh? He muttered to himself. Suddenly Akeno remembered those words that he described himself with. She had a feeling where this was going. Okay then, why don't you ask Gabriel herself and see what she says about it? He said. Irina was starting to get annoyed, this wasn't the Issei she remembered. You don't really know anything about heaven do you? She asked loudly. Issei looked at her and laughed darkly. Really? I don't. Well then, what do you know about an angel named Maria? He replied. Everyone who knew about Issei's identity widened their eyes, it seemed they might learn a bit more about his mother. Kalwerner and Rainer were instantly interested to learn about her, they knew from Kai that she was a very sensitive topic to Issei. Not even Kai would talk to them about her. Nothing, we don't know about an angel named Maria. Irina said. Issei shook his head and sighed. Well I'll tell you a story, this story though, is filled with love at first. Then it turns dark and hatred is born. He started. Everyone started to listen intently, however, the exorcists were a bit confused. They had no idea what to expect. The angel Maria. She chose her own path in life, and it was to fall in love. He said suddenly. Zenovia narrowed her eyes. What does this have to do with anything? She most likely fell from lust. She said. That's when Issei glared at her. Everyone felt the temperature. She didn't. She fell in love with a devil, and not a common one. Somehow they conceived a child. He said suddenly. Zenovia and Irina widened their eyes, but before they could say anything, Issei continued. This child though, was forced into hiding due to his species. He was a Nephilim, he never met his own mother or father. All those years turned him into a bitter person, fueled by the rage of his own desires. He lived for it, he thrived off of his need for vengeance. Heaven condemned his mother for falling in love with their enemy, and the lovers never saw each other again. He said. Zenovia started to laugh loudly. You really expect us to believe this foolish story? What proof do you have of it? She asked suddenly. She had no idea just how much she fucked up. Proof. He mumbled. Zenovia smirked. We want proof. He said louder, but his voice had an edge in it. Irina shook her head. Come on say, you must know that story isn't true. Whoever told you was obviously telling you a lie. No angel would fall in love with a devil. She said. Issei started to laugh loudly. Really? Well then, you asked for proof. He said. Before anyone knew it, they were staring at eight wings coming out from Issei's back. Everyone could see them clearly. What? Zenovia asked shocked. Irina had no words. I am the child, my father is Lucifer the Morning Star, and my mother is Maria. He said loudly. Issei decided to add insult to injury, and suddenly he glowed a deep blue, the devils in the room cringed as they felt the Holy Presence enter. Soon they were looking at his angel form. I'm both angel and devil, your belief that heaven isn't that bad, can be shoved up where the sun don't shine. He said loudly. Everyone cringed as they felt his aura, it was strong and powerful. Soon the holy presence faded as he reverted out of his form, and he tucked his wings back in. Maybe soon, you'll actually realize you're blind to the world and what it truly is, and how it works. He said suddenly. He was about to speak up, however, Zenovia beat him to it. We don't need your help, we can handle this on our own. She said. Issei shook his head. Maybe you'd like a sparring session to see how outclassed you really are. Even I would have trouble with Kakabiel. He's a cadre class fallen angel with high amounts of experience. He said suddenly. Ria suddenly spoke up. Now let's not fight she started, but she was suddenly interrupted. Everyone turned towards the door as it opened, revealing Kiba. Actually, that's exactly what should happen. He said suddenly. Zenovia turned to him and spoke. Who are you? She asked. Kiba just shook his head. Nobody important. He said vaguely. Issei looked at him for a moment, Kiba was glaring at the holy swords. He instantly mused he was a survivor, he may need to keep an eye on him. If he was like this when Kakabiel finally showed himself. It wouldn't be pretty. He needed to keep a cool head and be calm. Before anyone knew it, they were outside. Kiba and Issei were facing off against the two exorcists. Kiba kept glaring at the swords in their hands, Issei shook his head again, as he realized he had a vendetta. The look in his eyes made it clear to Issei, he would kill to get his hands on those swords. If needed, he would knock him out. Outside the barrier, Asia started to speak up. 
Is this a really the child of them? Is he really a Nephilim? She asked quietly. Riaz looked at her now Bishop. She still wasn't used to the idea, however, she did have twilight healing. Akeno suddenly spoke up to answer Asia's question. Yes he is. He may seem a bit rude at times, however, it's just a wall. In truth, he's been hurting for quite some time. I've only gotten close enough to see for myself. She said suddenly. Riaz whipped around to her queen, it was evident that something was going on. When did you get so close to him? She asked suddenly. Akeno chuckled and turned to her king. Are you jealous Riaz? That I'm the one that got close to him, enough for him to open up a bit. She chuckled. Riaz glared at her queen, but suddenly turned to the fight that was just starting, as did everyone else. They listened as Zenovia started to speak. Are you ready to lose? She asked. Issei just shook his head, this girl needed a big reality check. Bring it. Kiba said suddenly. Irina looked at Kiba for a second. Let's go. She shouted. Zenovia charged at Issei, while Irina charged at Kiba. Issei quickly rolled out of the way as Zenovia's sword came crashing down. She's fast. I can't play around here, these swords will cause a good bit of damage. He quickly thought. He couldn't just dodge and weave either, no he needed to fight back. However, this girl wasn't giving him any chances. He needed an opening. So it was time to create one. Forcibly. Zenovia charged at him again, this time, Issei was ready. As she charged, she failed to notice the black lightning streaming through his body, and before she knew it. She lurched forwards as Issei had punched her, that's when she felt the shock go through her body. As she finally recovered from his punch and its after effects. She got a good look at him, and was shocked. Black lightning flowed like a river through his body, but that wasn't what shocked her. No it was his sword, the red and black demonic sword, seemed to spark with ferocity with the same lightning his body had. It was almost as if his body was an amplifier to the sword. Making it more deadly. Irina managed to catch a glance at Issei, and was instantly shocked just as Zenovia. It seemed they truly were outclassed. Give me all you got. Issei said to Zenovia suddenly. Before anyone knew it, Zenovia charged again. This time she was aiming to get a good hit on him. She had no idea what kind of power he could use though, and that was her critical mistake. Brushing in, without no backup plan. She would soon find out otherwise. As she swung her sword, aiming downwards at his leg. She was surprised, as her sword was met easily with his. Suddenly her sword was starting to be pushed back, as Issei easily forced it upwards. He smirked as he saw her struggling, he quickly pushed her sword all the way above her head. It was time, he had an opening. Issei pivoted his body and landed a powerful kick to her ribs. Zenovia winced as she felt the pain come to her, she was shocked at how easily he was tossing her around. This guy was no pushover, she had a feeling that he wasn't done. As she looked up, she knew her thoughts were true as she saw his expression. It was hardened and fierce. Is that all you got? He mocked. Zenovia got up and charged once again, this time she was giving it all she had. Issei noticed the determination in her eyes, it reminded him of how he was when he was young. So much defiance, it reminded him of he was. However, he was different now. He was changing, more every day. Now it was time to change her, to show her. Issei crouched as Zenovia did a horizontal slash with her sword, he then twirled while he was crouched with his leg extended and easily tripped her, making her topple backwards. Issei took that moment to follow up. Before she knew it, Zenovia felt the sword's edge against her neck. It was checkmate. Zenovia dropped her sword and put her hands up, she knew better than to fight back now. Both Issei and Zenovia turned towards Kiba and Arena as their fight continued. It seemed it was an equal matchup, however, Issei noticed something very quickly. Every single time their blades clashed against one another, Kiba's face darkened, and it narrowed his eyes even more. Issei knew that he was going to make a mistake, and it could cost him. He may need to intervene soon. Kiba suddenly ducked under Irina's sword and was able to trip her up, he quickly followed his attacks up, not giving any time to recover. Issei narrowed his eyes, that was a bit too close. Even if he didn't really know Irina that much, he still wouldn't let anyone get fatal wounds, he'd stop them. Arena charged suddenly, and was swinging with precision, making Kiba dodge with everything he had. Issei noticed his eyes get extremely serious, and he saw something he knew all too well. He had enough, and was pissed. Kiba was going to make his move, and it wouldn't be pretty. Issei looked at Zenovia for a second. You'd best stay back, this might get a bit sketchy in a minute. He said. Zenovia didn't know what he meant, but listened as he suddenly stepped forwards while watched them. Kiba suddenly tripped Arena and went for a lunge. However, Issei was already on the move. Lighting was covering him as he sped towards Arena, he quickly kicked her out of the way. It may have been a bit rough, but it was better than getting sliced up. He quickly transformed both his hands into its demonic form, and put his arms out to block it. 
He didn't know what to expect, but he felt the holy presence in the sword as it struck. His eyes widened. Vibba was using a holy sword. He regretted interfering now, he knew what the repercussions were going to be. He felt it eating at him quickly, he quickly took his hand and chopped Kiba in the back of the neck to knock him out. Suddenly everyone looked at him and rushed to him as he felt on one knee, grunting and squeezing his eyes closed. Issei. Are you alright? Akeno asked worried. She was definitely worried, both his arms had been slashed by a holy sword. Issei could only shake his head, it was a bit too much for him. Asia quickly went to try to heal his arms, however, as she got closer, he swatted her hands away. Don't, it will only make it worse. There's only one way to heal this. He said through gritted teeth. Rainer and Kalawarner were worried as well. How? They both asked. Issei shook his head. You two, go and get Kai. He'll know what to do. He shouted. They both nodded and vanished in magic circle. The Kendall looked at the arms and looked even more worried, what was wrong? She thought. Issei, what is wrong with your hands? Why wouldn't Asia be able to heal you? She asked suddenly. Everyone wanted to know. My hands are currently in their demonic state, and they were attacked by a holy element. It has created a violent reaction, like I told you before, my power needs to be balanced, or there is consequences. The holy element will continue to eat away any demonic energy that is produced. Now Asia would be able to heal it, if the holy element was gone. However, I am against the clock now. He explained. That surprised them, however, Akeno wondered what he meant at the end of his explanation. What do you mean, you're against the clock? She asked. Everyone turned to him as he sighed. My power is currently clashing at each other like crazy, I can feel the holy energy eating at the demonic. I need to get help before it's too late, if I don't then the holy energy will continue to devour the demonic, and then I'll be so weak that I could be easily killed. He said. Akeno was now worried, she knew this was serious. How can we get you help? She asked. Issei was about to speak, but a large magic circle appeared, and Kai stepped out, along with Raynor and Kalwarner. Once Kai saw him, he rushed towards him. Ice. Are you alright? He asked. Issei nodded numbly. You know what needs to happen, get her here. Issei shouted. That made everyone surprised. Kai nodded and disappeared in a magic circle. Leaving the group with one question. Who was her? As Issei waited for Kai to get back with however was coming, they couldn't help but wonder. Who was it that was coming exactly? That's what they wanted to know. Akeno was the one to ask the obvious question. Issei? Who is coming exactly? She asked. Issei sighed, he knew that they would be shocked when she arrived. They wouldn't expect to see someone like her so early in the game. He only hoped they would be respectful. Someone who is very important to me. Someone who has helped me time and time again. She is the only one who can start the process where I can heal myself. He said vaguely. Rainer and Kalwarner were now more interested in just who this was, however, they had no ideas. Just give it to us straight. Who is coming? Kalwarner asked loudly. They all wanted to know. Issei chuckled then sighed and looked up. You'll find out soon enough. He said. They all sighed, but before anyone could speak up. A magic circle appeared. However, only Kai came out of it. Issei looked at him expectantly. Is she coming? He asked. Kai sighed, then nodded. Issei rose an eyebrow as he began to speak. They are coming. He said. Issei sighed once again, however, there was something wrong. Is they? Akeno asked suddenly. Issei shook his head and sighed once again. I hope you wouldn't have to meet them yet. However, it seems I have no choice. Just a word of advice, one is very temperamental. Especially when it comes to me, we didn't really see eye to eye on a lot of things. He said suddenly. I snorted and spoke up. That's an understatement to say. He said. Issei chuckled. I know. Let's just hope he's in a good mood. He said. I nodded. Everyone suddenly turned to look at a large magic circle that appeared suddenly. The circle's symbol was unknown among the group, except for Issei and Kai. Issei sighed as he saw it, he knew now that they were coming. He could only hope that he wouldn't be a ass this time around. However, he knew that wouldn't happen. Suddenly everyone turned their attention to the magic circle as three people appeared out of it. The first one they noticed was a tall woman, she had black hair that flowed down past her shoulders. She was wearing a red and white kimono that went down to her knees. She seemed to be worried a large amount for Issei. The other one was a male, he had silver hair that flowed past his shoulders, just as the woman before him. He was wearing a black and purple kimono, in comparison to the woman, he seemed to just look over Issei with a wondering gaze. The last and final person that was there, was another male. He had midnight blue hair that seemed to stop right before his shoulders, he had a blue and grey kimono like all the others before him. He however, was grinning wildly. 
they could feel the excitement that was rolling off of him, and he was staring purposefully at Issei. Before anyone could as the obvious question, the woman shouted out. Ice. She said loudly, as she ran towards him. Issei flinched as he was tackled by the woman. Boy. I'm fine. Just need a little help. Issei said loudly. I looked at Issei dryly. An understatement yet again Ice. He said. Issei shook his head. The others were now confused even more. Akeno looked at the woman that was bear-hugging Issei, and instantly felt a little anger, she looked at Issei sharply. Who is she Ice? Akeno asked sweetly. Issei felt a shiver down his spine as he heard her. So the brat finally got a girlfriend. A new voice spoke up. Issei blushed suddenly, as he wasn't far off on that assumption. The newcomers noticed it, and their reactions were expected. The woman had a smile, but there was something else to it. It was a sad smile, almost if she was both happy and sad at the same time. The two men had similar reactions. The one who suggested it had widened eyes that held disbelief. While the other had a raised eyebrow and a smile, he had an impressed look on his face. So he's matured a bit huh? That's definitely unexpected, I remember when you were still wrathful and wanting to spill a ton of blood. The group heard. Issei looked at the man that spoke. Well, a lot of things have happened since the last time we saw each other Tsukiyomi. He said. Issei just dropped a bomb. B did you just say Tsukiyomi? Ria's ask shell shocked. Issei squaffed and nodded nonetheless. The group looked at the others and were able to put the pieces together. Then that is Amaterasu and Susanu? Akeno asked for confirmation. Issei sighed, then nodded. I swore these people. Amaterasu asked curiously. Issei gritted his teeth, there was bigger problems. First can you help me? This is hurting really bad. He said through gritted teeth. The Matarasu gasped then nodded fervently. Okay sorry. Let's get this fixed shall we? She said suddenly. Everyone watched as Issei held out his arms to the goddess and she then placed her hands on his arms and suddenly black flames were covering his arms. Issei gritted his teeth while the pain increased, but this was the only way for him to start the healing process. The Matarasu's flames would devour the holy energy till there was nothing left, then he could use his angel form to heal himself. Soon the flames disappeared and Issei's arms were burned badly, but the holy energy was completely gone. Issei stood up weakly and motioned for Amaterasu to back up. Everyone was surprised once again when Issei started to glow blue, and soon a matching halo appeared above his head. His wings were released soon after, everyone stared at the angel form in awe. Even if they'd seen it before, it was still a shocking sight to see up close. As Issei stood back up, he looked at the three gods with expectation, he knew they wanted answers. So who caused this ice? Amaterasu asked sweetly. Issei shivered once again, her tone was just like Akeno's. Irina paled fast as she heard the goddess. Amaterasu, I did this on my own will. It was a spar and I needed to save someone from making a very stupid mistake. He said as he glanced at Irina. Amaterasu sighed and nodded, it was then that Susanu spoke up. So how much stronger have you gotten brat? You must have not been sitting around, even I know that. He asked suddenly. Issei sighed as he knew what was coming. You know what I want. You ain't getting out of it either, it's been at least a decade since we last fought each other. So it's time to change that. Susanu said loudly. Issei sighed and nodded. Not right now though, tomorrow we will. So I have a chance to recoup my energy. He replied to him. Susanu finally relented, then nodded. Tsukiyomi looked at the scene with a bit of shock. Tell me Issei, what has caused such a change in you? He asked. The other gods looked at Tsukiyomi like he was crazy, however, their eyes widened when Issei just sighed and looked to the skies. It seemed that a change, bigger than they imagined had really happened. A lot of things have happened, too many to list to be honest. Just know this, I've learned to see past it all. He said loudly while still looking at the skies. Before anyone knew it, the sparring session was over. It seemed that they still had a lot of questions that needed to be answered, Issei already knew that much. So what are you going to do now? Akeno asked suddenly. Issei blinked, then sighed. It's time to get back to training. He said. Everyone looked a little confused at that, even the gods did themselves. The Kabil will no doubt be attacking sooner or than later, so I need to be ready. I'd suggest you do the same. Kakabiel is no pushover, and he will not hesitate. He said suddenly. Before anyone knew it, everyone had went their separate ways. The gods were visiting Issei currently, they wanted to catch up. So Issei, what has caused quite a change in you? I know the old you wouldn't hesitate to kill them. What happened? Tsukiyomi asked suddenly. They were at Issei's house. Issei sighed and looked at the god of the moon. There are a lot of things, one of them was her and I'll admit it. She definitely changed some of my views. He admitted. Everyone was shocked at what he was saying, they didn't expect him to admit it at all. 
The Madrasu took that moment to speak up. They say, I know you. So I know what you're thinking, don't hesitate and tell this girl what you really feel. She said softly. Issei blinked after hearing her, but he nodded nonetheless. Before anyone knew it, they had talked for a few more hours. Susanu and Issei decided to have their fight tomorrow, since it was the weekend. Before anyone knew it, the sun appeared on the horizon. The day was the day. Everyone would see a fraction of Issei's true power. Issei knew this fight would be different, for one simple reason. The reason being, that Susanu wouldn't hold back one bit. No, with him, it was all about life or death. Which meant that Issei would have to use everything in his arsenal to fight the god. He couldn't underestimate him either. No that would be foolish, Susanu was a god after all. As both of them stood not 10 feet from each other, they knew this fight would be a good show for everyone that was present, and it seemed that there was a lot of people there to watch them. It seemed word had gotten around, most likely from Rias, due to the fact that Serzich's was there, along with Serafal. Sona's peerage, and Rias was there as well. Brainer, Kalwerner and Kai stared at the barrier that was covering them. The two Shinto gods behind them knew it was vital to put one up. Serzich's and Serafal were shocked to see the Shinto trinity there, that was a fact. They turned their attention to the gods and asked a question. A question that everyone probably had. Why so many high-level barriers? These two aren't going to go all out are they? Serafal asked. The Madarasu turned to the Leviathan and replied. These two will no doubt go all out, or near it. However, that won't be until the very end. They'll start out small, then work their way up. To Susanu, this is a test to ice. We all want to see how much stronger he has become. She said. Suddenly, everyone turned their attention towards the fight as they heard the sounds of metal clashing rapidly. They looked to see both Issei and Susanu exchanging blows left and right. Susanu was using a staff to block Issei's demonic sword. Both Serzich's and Serafal were awed at what they were seeing. Even the gods' eyes were widened, they didn't expect this kind of growth. The peerages couldn't make sense of what was happening. What's happening? How can they be moving so fast that we can't see it clearly? Sona asked confused. Serafal shook her head, then turned to her sister. It seems both Issei and Susanu are using their full speed, it's like a dance. Issei strikes, efficiently and precise, and then vanishes in a burst of speed as Susanu blocks it, and in turn goes to counter. However, with Issei dodging left and right, it seems it's a stalemate at the moment. She said. I chuckled and turned to the Leviathan. It won't be for long. He said. Everyone, even the gods turned to him as he sighed, then started to explain. Susanu is a god yes, but Issei has the raw power in him. Issei would be able to overpower him easily, that is if Susanu couldn't match his power. However, Susanu is still a god, so if Susanu gets serious, then it will be a challenge for Issei. He said. It was then, that both of them came back into view. They stood still and looked at each other, it seemed that Susanu was liking the fight. Due to the shit-eating grin he had on his face. It seems that you still have your battle reflexes. Let's see how much power you've gained in the last few decades he said loudly. Everyone turned to Susanu as he started to glow a bit. Soon, he wasn't wearing his kimono. No, he was wearing sleek black armor with midnight blue trimmings. It seemed the battle was just getting started. Issei grinned as he looked at him. He wanted a fight, so he would won. One that would shock everyone. Suddenly lightning strike struck around Issei as his body started to get covered in the lightning. It seemed Susanu knew what was going on and went into a defensive stance. Two balls of lightning were formed in each of Issei's hand, they were about the size of a softball. However, they all combined to form a gigantic one. Susanu barely had time to roll out of the way as Issei launched it towards him. Susanu looked to where it was headed and put his hands up as it exploded upon impact, unleash a storm of lightning bolts going in every direction. Susanu quickly took that moment and launched a counter-attack. Issei turned towards him as he heard the ground beneath him shift and crack. A large amount of water was swirling around Susanu, lightning started to come down as Susanu was summoning a storm. Outside the barrier, everyone was glad to have it. How can they dish out that powerful of attacks and keep on going? Serafal wondered. Serzich's had no answer. It's a pride thing, the two of them are so stubborn that they wouldn't give up that easily. The only way one of them will win is when the other is unconscious. Tsukiyomi said suddenly. They turned to the god of the moon like he was crazy, however, Amaterasu spoke up. He is right. They will not let the other one win easily. The battle has only begun. She said. They all blinked and turned back to the fight. They noticed Issei looking up at the storm above him. He knew he had to find a way to neutralize it before it got any bigger. If he didn't, then it would be a tough obstacle in his way. He knew what he had to do. Everyone watched closely as he started to glow a bright blue, the gods were shocked to see it. They knew what it was and what it meant to Issei. Or at least, what it used to mean to him. Why is he using that? 
I thought he hated it. Tsukiyomi asked calmly. I sighed and looked at the god of the moon. He used to. However, with light of his recent changes, it seems that he has learned to deal with it. He said. Everyone turned their attention towards Issei as he started to glow even brighter. Susanoo took a hesitant step back, he knew what was coming. He couldn't believe it though, he remembered his distaste for his angel form. However, that was obvious that wasn't the case now. Issei's eyes opened, and they showed no emotion. Just determination. As the halo appeared above his head, everyone knew he was getting serious. Susanoo started to understand this wasn't going to be a easy win for him. No, if he wanted to have a chance of winning, he would need to let everything go. No holding back whatsoever. He wasn't either. It was then, he realized the monument growth this kid had. It was obvious to him that the gap had expanded and it would only continue to grow. He was snapped out of his stupor when he saw Issei raise his hand and a small glow of blue started to cover his palm. He narrowed his eyes as several shards of ice were shot up towards the eye of the storm. He watched in confusion as Issei made a fist and a large exploding sound. Everyone looked towards the storm to see it starting to turn white, and suddenly a gust of cold wind blew through the area as it expanded. It seemed Issei was changing the storm to a blizzard. Susanoo looked at him in awe. This was definitely not expected. Issei looked at the blizzard he made with blank eyes, and then willed it to fade. Everyone stared at him in awe, as he easily took out Susanoo's storm. It seemed the battle was getting closer and closer to its end. Susanu quickly put up his guard as Issei dashed towards him once again, however in his hand was a spear of light, and in his other was his light sword. Light manipulation. Since when did Issei use that? Amaterasu asked bewildered. Tsukiyomi shook his head, he had no answers. Ice has changed, and it had a large effect on him. The effects are still coming, left and right. He said. The Kendo blushed as she knew she was the main reason for his change. They all turned their attention back to the fight as Issei and Susanoo continued to exchange blows once again. However, Issei seemed to not really care, almost as if he knew what to expect. That's when something unexpected happened. Susanoo started to glow a dark blue, and his staff started to glow as well. That made Issei widen his eyes, Susanoo was getting serious. He was going to use his symbol of power. His godly weapon. Everyone was soon, staring at a really ornate staff that had lightning crackling off of it. Issei quickly dashed away from a gigantic lightning strike that would have fried him on the spot. Susanoo wasn't giving him any openings either, all he could do was dodge. However, he knew there would be a time where Susanoo had to recharge, he couldn't just fire off these blasts non-stop. So, it was a matter of waiting, then striking. Soon it was time, Susanoo finished off with another lightning strike. However, he was starting to fatigue. Issei saw this and knew he had a chance to finish it. Before anyone knew it, Issei vanished in a burst of speed and reappeared right before Susanoo. Everyone was shocked to see him holding his sword against his neck. It wasn't the sword that shocked them. No, it was the white flames that danced across it. It was obvious who the winner was. I yield. Susanoo said loudly. Everyone stared in awe of the area that was their battlefield. It was obvious to everyone that Issei was growing more powerful than ever. It had been a couple days since the fight with Susanoo, and Issei knew the time was coming. Kakabiel would be appearing soon, there was no doubt whatsoever in his mind. With Arena and Zenovia coming to get the stolen Excaliburs, it was obvious to Issei who stole them. He knew Kakabiel would no doubt be making his move soon, whatever it was. That meant that he needed to prepare, and that meant training. However, there was more to do. He needed to make sure the devils were strong enough to defend against him, or there would be no doubt tragedy coming their way. He knew what he needed to do, now it was just doing it. So he got up, for today he had to go back to school. He knew he needed to train them as well, but how? That was the question that has been lingering in his mind for the last few days. If he put them through his training, they wouldn't last. It would be pathetic, even if he didn't want to admit it. He knew when he went to school today, that he would have to have a meeting with the devils. He also knew, that the higher-ups were going to be wanting to meet with him soon. That was a fact in his mind. As he walked downstairs, he knew he needed to talk to Kai. It was situations like this that his advice could be of great value, and it usually led Issei down the right path. He wasn't his guardian for nothing. As he walked down, he saw Kai behind the counter like usual. As soon as Issei sat down, Kai turned and saw his face. That's when he knew something was up and he needed help. What are you thinking about? He asked curiously. Issei looked at Kai and began to speak. It's obvious that Kakabiel will be making his move shortly, it's only a matter of time. The Excaliburs aren't just a coincidence, both of us can connect the dots. He said seriously. I nodded numbly, he knew it too. This would be one of Issei's biggest battles, in multiple senses. One, the whole fate of the town would be at his hands, secondly, Kakabiel wasn't an opponent to underestimate at all. 
he would no doubt be unpredictable and conniving. He was a cadre class fallen angel for a reason. What else is there? Kai asked suddenly. He knew something else was up, he is saying needed more than just that. The devils, they need to be prepared for what is to come. We know what the battle will be like, they would be killed if he was to show up tomorrow. I need to figure out a way to train them. However, what I go through and what I put others through is very different. It will definitely be a tough challenge to tackle, they all need work. He said suddenly. I thought about it for a moment. You have to acknowledge the fact that the Gremory's peerage is a bit incomplete, and they have a lot of work needed. However, that doesn't dispute the fact that they have potential. All of them, no matter who they may be. He said suddenly. Issei looked at Kai for a moment, he knew he would have to try something else with the group, he knew it would take a bit. However, they would learn from it and become a lot stronger, and maybe have a chance of survival. As Issei looked at the clock, he had to be leaving soon. Soon, Raynor and Kalawarner were up and sitting downstairs along with them. What were you guys talking about? Kalawarner asked. Before he knew it, he had to leave and said goodbye to Kai and headed off towards the academy, for a day that surely would bring a lot of changes. Changes that would no doubt, be hard at first. As he arrived in front of the gate of the academy, he sighed as he opened it up and walked forwards. As they walked through the hallways, everyone looked at them. Their reputation had increased as they had started to be seen around the devils. It was obvious to them that it wouldn't go away. So they just had to deal with it. Issei decided he would meet with the Gremory peerage at lunch. As soon as it came time for the meet to go down, Issei knew he had to break things down for them. It was a matter of life and death, Kakabiel would be here soon. Even if they didn't know the full picture, he would break it to them. As he walked towards the orc building with Raynor and Kalawarner in tow with him, he knew it was time. This was going to be like nothing he ever attempted to do, training Kalawarner and Raynor was one thing, but a peerage added to that was worse. So when they finally sat down and began to start the meeting, Issei needed to evaluate the situation at hand, then act accordingly. If there was any chance that this would work, he needed to do just that. As the meeting finally started to get around, he knew it was time to get to the point. So he looked at the group and started to speak up. At this point in time, it has become evident to me that with Kakabiel being the one who stole the Excaliburs, that means he is getting close to being ready to show up. That means you need to be ready, and frankly, if he were to show up now, you wouldn't stand a chance. He said simply. The group that he faced, looked at him with such utter disbelief. Issei sighed and shook his head, he'd seen the looks in their eyes. You think we can't fight? You don't think we would stand our ground to defend our home? Rhea said loudly. Issei glared at her, and the temperature in the room dropped dropped quite a bit. I didn't say that, I said you weren't ready yet. You call yourselves a peerage, but what I see is a group of kids who don't understand what is at stake. You have potential, all of you. It is a matter of learning how to unlock it and hone it into a deadly force to be reckoned with. He said loudly. What do you mean exactly? Kiba asked suddenly. He was looking at Issei with determined eyes. There have been many quotes over the years made by the humans, in many famous movies. They all have the same meaning, one thing is always true. With power comes great responsibility. In that sense you need to know how your power works, you need to know how it affects you, and just how much power you can dish out. If you can't control it, then it would be a waste to even have it. He said sharply. Everyone looked at him with wide eyes, it was true and they knew it. Every single one of you has potential like I said, it is a part of you. It is what you are, you have to learn to accept both sides of the coin, the good and the bad. If you don't then you're wasting time. Every one of us has had a rough time in our life, but the future is always changing. It's always going to be different tomorrow, even more in a sense later down the road as years pass, you begin to realize that it wasn't worth fighting it. Issei sighed and then spoke yet again. It is what makes who we are, there is no point in denying it. Like I said you're not ready to face Kakabiel, only training will show if you are. You need to cultivate your own power into something that is for you even my potential is still to be unlocked, my power is incomplete, I haven't accepted both of my sides yet. However, I am learning and you should start to too. He said softly. Everyone in the room looked at him with shock and awe. Rhea shook from her stupor as she recalled Issei's ending statement. Instantly it made her curious, and she needed to know. What do you mean your power is incomplete? I've thought you've trained most of your life to make your power yours, what is left? She asked loudly. Everyone one in the room looked at him with curiosity as they heard him sigh and start to look at his hands. Suddenly he looked up and everyone got a look at his eyes. It was like they were hollow and void. I have lived for quite a long time, and all throughout my life, most of my power had to be gained through grueling training and tempered emotions. It took a while to unlock most of it. Even to this day, there is still a percentage to be unlocked. Specifically it is my forms and how they work. He simply said. The Kendall looked at him closely, he looked like he was remembering a part of his life. 
She wanted to know what his past was like, she figured if she could get him to open up to her a bit more, then she would know what to do from there. However, it stumped her on how to adjust to that. She also knows some ways to get some information from him discreetly. What do you mean your potential is in your forms? She asked suddenly. Everyone looked at Issei as he stood up and looked around. Why do we go outside and I'll give you a little demonstration? He said vaguely. Everyone instantly wondered what he meant and was compelled to follow him as he turned around and started to walk towards the exit. Issei knew he needed to go into the woods a bit for what he was about to do. So he looked at the veil of tress in front of him and continued towards them, the group behind him followed without a word. This change of scenery made it known to them that what Issei was about to show them needed to be controlled. As everyone gathered in a clearing, Issei looked around and sighed. This was the right place to do what he was about to do. He looked up and held up his hand, suddenly he shot out a blast of energy that formed into a barrier. He suddenly held out his hands, with his palms facing upwards. On one side of a coin you have the demonic side of my powers. He said suddenly. In his right hand, the familiar ball of black lightning started to form for everyone to see. However, they still wondered where this was going. On the other side of the coin, you have the holy side of my powers. He said simply. Suddenly, the forest lit up around them as a glowing ball of fire was colored in pure white. They all felt the enormous holy power as it weighed down on them. Even the fallen angels backed up a bit from it. It was obvious, Issei was more powerful than they knew. It was that fact too, that they didn't know about him. There was still some stuff hidden from them that they guess easily. Both of them are powerful and come at a great cost. My power is incomplete like I said earlier. He continued. He started to push the two opposite abilities against each other in an attempt to combine them. However, it didn't work out too well. Everyone watched with awe as the two balls of demonic and holy energy started to blend together, they thought it might work. That was until they saw Issei sweating and the mass of energy he was trying to create, starting to bubble and crackle with ferocity. Suddenly a large explosion happened, luckily the barrier held up, but barely. That is the result of an uncontrolled mix of my powers. He said softly. Everyone looked at him in stupor. What do you mean uncontrolled? Akeno asked. Issei looked at her and began to answer. Every one of my mentors have taught me the same thing, whether the wording was a little different or not. However, it is the same each way. Higher power can be unlocked, but it isn't easy. He said. Everyone looked at him as he continued to speak. It is like this, it is you yourself who is stopping you from becoming your best. Emotions have power, and through times of struggle, whether it be your emotions or your will. You have to push forwards constantly, on rare occasions a traumatic event could happen, and people have been known to go through an evolution of power to adapt to the situation. That is the power of emotions, the other way to gain higher power is through constant and brutal training to force your body to get stronger. There are other, way stronger abilities that I could utilize. However, the amount of control and precision it take to use them are beyond my current power level. I can use them in dire situations, but at a grave price, one that can't be avoided unless I gain more power. He said loudly. Rias looked at him for a moment. What kind of abilities you have that will cause that much of a drawback? She asked suddenly. Issei looked at her for a moment. They are nothing you should care about, just knowing about them is enough to scare you shitless. The power at my disposal is something incomprehensible to most people who see its true abilities. He said loudly. It was obvious to her that she wasn't going to get anything from him. So would they just have to wait and see what his power could really do, when that time came though would they be ready for it? That was the question in her mind. Suddenly, Kiba spoke up. How do you live with it? Knowing you're not at your best and that you could have more power to avenge what you want? He asked loudly. Issei looked at him sharply, then suddenly he took a deep breath and looked at him with hardened eyes. I will admit, vengeance is something worth fighting for. If it deserves it, if you want vengeance against someone, you however, cannot be blinded by rage. If you are, you will lose yourself to it. Anger is the one of the strongest emotions, but it blind you in a fight against someone stronger than you, and you will pay the ultimate price. Pibba looked at him with clear intent in his eyes. How do you know that huh? I have a reason to fight for, I want to spar to see if I'm ready or not. He said loudly. Issei looked at him oddly, the boy surely knew the power he had, but why request a spar? He wondered what Kiba's grudge was, it was something obvious to him, there was something else. He would ask later, but now, he needed to knock some sense into Kiba, before something happened. Do you want to spar? Very well, however, be warned that I will not go easy on you. He said loudly. Kiba nodded and summoned a sword. Issei looked at him and sighed, he raised one hand and shoot a burst of energy into the sky. It soon condensed into a barrier that covered only him and Kiba. The rest were watching on the sidelines. Issei looked at the sword and smirked, he knew Kiba was a knight no doubt, so he would no doubt be a fast opponent. Issei, however, knew he would be able to take him. 
Suddenly Kiba dashed forwards with impressive speed, Issei quickly ducked under a horizontal strike. Kiba instantly widened his eyes as Issei twirled around and delivered a roundhouse to his ribs, Kiba cringed in pain but, his eyes were hard and determined. Issei looked at him for a moment before grinning. Kiba regained his bearings shortly after that and thought about the spar. Issei instantly recognized what his sacred gear was as he summoned a gigantic amount of swords around him with the blades in the ground. Sword birth, such a sacred gear is fitting for him. He thought dryly. As Kiba suddenly pulled a sword free from the ground, he leapt forwards in the air towards Issei, who rolled to the side as Kiba slammed his blade against the ground. Issei leapt back suddenly and started to rethink his strategy, right now close quarters combat with him wasn't in his interest. To win this H needed an advantage. He needed to slow him down. A few ideas popped into his head, but he needed to act now. He needed to know what he could take and what he couldn't, that was his goal in his mind. So he raised one hand and a blue frost started to cover his hand. Kiba looked at it as a ball of ice started to form above his palm. Issei then whipped it towards Kiba at blinding speeds. Kiba's only instinct was to dodge, he luckily sped past the ball as it crashed behind him, as it landed the blast radius was covered in several sharp ice spikes that were about two feet long. Issei knew at this point that Kiba's speed and his ability to dodge were akin to his, however, he lacked some other areas. Issei wasn't afraid to exploit them either. Everyone suddenly looked at Issei with shock and awe, he rose both of his hands, and he started to glow blue a bit. He didn't transform though, so they wondered what he was about to do. Kiba on the other hand, felt the monstrous power build up in the barrier, and knew this was something he wouldn't be able to dodge. However, he wasn't scared, no, this made him more determined. Issei was surely on another level, sparring against him would no doubt be able to help improve his skills. However, should have expected Issei's attitude towards the fight. It was then, when the glowing mass of energy above his palm started to form and crystallize, that he knew it was do or die. So he went into action. As soon as Issei did in fact. Issei slammed the massive ice sphere on the ground, and the result was astounding. The sphere shattered, leaving in its wake, waves of frost increasing in radius as they traveled outwards. Kiba had no choice but to jump up and expand his wings, and decided to hover above until it was clear. Everyone felt the chill of the resulting area, when all the frost cleared, the area was covered in a thick layer of ice, with jagged spikes and walls all throughout it. It changed the battlefield to his advantage at will, such an ability is no doubt something that can turn the tide at any moment. Akeno said softly. Everyone knew that was true, it was a well-known fact the battlefield is a major key in winning any battle. However, this was definitely unexpected. Kiba looked at the ground below him as he hovered, Issei was now getting serious. As soon as he landed he felt the chilling temperature, but it wasn't slippery like he thought it would be. No, it was like it had a layer of frost just above the ice, to make it more of a snow texture at the top. He had no way to counter the tactic Issei employed either, he was now in a corner of a game of cat and mouse, however, he wouldn't give up yet. It was then Issei decided to summon his sword, the battlefield, how it was now made it very difficult for Kiba to dodge efficiently, so he had no doubt in his mind that close quarters would be a bit more matched. As Kiba dashed in again, he realized just how the battlefield affected the spar. As soon as he started to get to speed, he started to trip and luckily was able to catch his fall by stabbing his sword in the ground. He took a deep breath and looked up at Issei. Issei knew he was about out of steam, so only a bit more and he would give. It was time to push even more. Everyone instantly noticed the change in his expression, it was hardened to the bone. They knew he was serious now, Kiba looked at him and knew this spar was coming to close, and very fast. However, he wasn't going to give in, he knew he'd lose from the start, however, this fight made him stronger just by the fact that Issei was testing his limits. Issei vanished in a burst of speed, faster than Kiba could have predicted. Kiba wasn't able to dodge full and felt his arm get slashed. He looked at it as it started to spew blood. It was a good cut, no doubt would need to be healed afterwards. Suddenly a jolt of pain erupted in his rib area as he looked down to see Issei jamming the butt of his sword into his ribs. You took your eyes of me when it mattered most, that is a fatal mistake no one must make. For that you lose. Issei said finally. All Kiba saw next was darkness as Issei finished it off with a rock-hard uppercut. Kiba still had some ways to go. As soon as the barrier went down over the both of them, Issei knew he was about to have to explain his reasons for the force he used in the sparring match. However, that didn't excuse the fact that he was getting fed up. It seemed that Kiba was really the only one who could do a bit of damage to Kakabiel, he may have been wrong, just by the face he hadn't tested them all yet. However, it was time to correct this disorderly peerage. He didn't care it anymore. Be what he needed to do. Why did you use that on Kiba? The million dollar question came. Issei looked at her for a moment, Ria seriously needed some work. 
He was getting sick of it, he was thinking of something very big, but if he did it would cost a lot of resources and a few favors. The backlash would most likely announce his return to anyone who knew who he really was. It was that fact that was on his mind and needed to think on it more. If he were to do it, and they were to survive it. They wouldn't have any more problems with their powers, then he could be assured Kakabiel wouldn't take them down easily. He decided then and there that he was going to do it. He looked at the group and said one thing. When school is over, come to my house. He said loudly. Everyone looked at him surprised, but he turned around suddenly and started walking. So it was obvious they weren't getting anything out of him. Rainer and Kalwerner looked at each other confused, they had no idea what was coming. Before anyone knew it, school was out and everyone was getting ready to go to Issei's. Issei currently sat down in front of Kai, he didn't have much time. So he was going to say what was needed to be said, and quickly. I figured out what to do. Issei said suddenly. Kai rose an eyebrow, and gestured for him to continue. I'm going to take them to my training grounds. He said seriously. Kai looked flabbergasted, he didn't think Issei would do that at all. Only the two of them, except a few others, knew the secret of Issei's training methods. So the whole thing. Kai said quietly. Issei nodded. I realize this will take a few days or up to a week for them to get through it. So I figured it's time that I contact some old friends. Issei said quickly. It was then Kai looked at Issei with a very regarded expression, his care for the boy was showing. Issei knew what it meant, and he didn't even let Kai speak. I know it means and the consequences that would follow. However, I have no other choice, it seems it is inevitable that they will find me. Don't worry I will be ready and I will end it, once and for all. He said loudly. I looked at Issei for a while, then he nodded. He didn't like it, but he had to trust him. Issei sighed and stood up when he felt the energy of a magic circle coming his way, it was Rainer and Kalawerner. He had them visit Azazel and get something. Do you have it? He asked. Rainer handed a plain vanilla folder that had a good bit of files in it. They were instructed by a very serious and deadly looking Issei to not ask any questions or open it and look at them. Azazel didn't want to know why you wanted those, as soon as we gave him your request, he didn't even ask for a reason. He simply grabbed the documents from his office and put them in here, and told us to get it to you first before we do anything else. Kalawerner said suddenly. Issei nodded and laid the folder on the counter, Kai got a good look at it, and saw what it was. So you truly are going through with this plan? He asked loudly. Issei nodded yet again. If I'm really going to do this, I need to be prepared. Issei said. Rainer and Kalawerner looked at him. Does this have to do with why you wanted the devils to come here? Kalawerner asked. Issei looked at her and knew instantly she was trying to pry, he'd be dead when she got some of his deeper secrets. What is in the folder only has a small fraction to do with why they're coming, which should be pretty soon. He said quickly. He was right as well, a few moments later, the door was being knocked on. Issei told them to come in loud enough for them to hear it outside. When the door opened the whole group walked in, as Issei looked around he sighed. He knew the moment he said what he was going to say, there was no going back at all. Sit down, all of you. He said simply. Once everyone had taken a seat, Akeno took the opportunity to speak. Why did you want us to come here Issei? She asked. As she watched Issei's reaction, she was met with a few different things. As she watched his eyes look to her she saw some sadness, but then it was changed to something akin to pride. She didn't have any idea on where to go next. The reason why I called you guys here today was to discuss something. He said vaguely. Discuss what exactly? Ria's interjected. Issei looked at her and chuckled, her experience would be definitely something. As of now, with Kakabiel currently almost damn near ready to strike. I have decided to take action and you're coming with me, all of you except Kai. He said loudly. That's when everyone's eyes widened, and their thoughts ran wild. To where? Rainer asked suddenly. Issei chuckled and replied nonetheless. You're going to the spot where I train, except I'm going to train you like I do. He said ominously. It took a few for it to sink in, but when it did, Issei knew that they knew what it would be like, but not what they were doing there. How are we going to train? Kalawerner asked. I took the spotlight from Issei and spoke loudly. You don't want to know, trust me on that one. For whatever reason, if Issei is taking you there, then he thinks you're ready to face what will come. Believe me when I say this, this place you're going is not for the faint of heart. He said mysteriously. Everyone besides Issei and Kai felt a few chills up their spine when they heard him speak. What of the more pressing matter of Kakabiel? Riaz asked. Issei sighed and knew it was time to divulge another piece to his plan. Right now, none of you stand a chance against a being of power like him. So I have decided to contact a few people to guard Kuo you could say. He responded. Before anyone could speak up, a magic circle appeared in the room. Issei sighed as the Shinto gods appeared before them. 
However, he wasn't expecting them to come. That made the question arise, what were they here for? What are you guys here for? Issei asked. I was the one who spoke up. I hope to talk some sense into, however, I see it as futile. You have made up your mind, so there is no way to change it now. He said suddenly. Issei sighed and looked at Kai, he couldn't blame him at all. No, this was something very serious in fact, Kai had every reason to call in whoever he could to help change his mind. However, his mind was set. That is if Kai or the Shinto Trinity didn't contact him. Issei knew if he was to show up, it would be a long night. This man was like Issei's older brother in all but blood to him, there was no one else besides Kai that had equivalent or more influence on Issei's thoughts and decisions. Which begged the proverbial question, when was he going to show? That question hit Issei like a train. When that moment came, a ton of stuff was going to be said. They hadn't seen each other in quite some time. So it was going to a tough reunion. Issei are you truly serious about this plan? Kai filled us in, we all are worried for you, and what would come of it? Amaterasu asked suddenly. Issei nodded numbly. Amaterasu, I know what it means, but I'm not giving up. What happened back then? I will not let it come to fruition, I will stop them. Issei said with finality. Everyone who didn't know what was really going on was thrown for a loop. Okay, care to fill some of us in and tell us what you're talking about? Riaz asked. Issei scoffed and turned to her. This has nothing to do with you guys, this is my own problem and not yours. It is for your sake that you don't know what it is, if you knew what was going on, you would be in grave danger. He responded. That's when Akendo decided to speak. Don't you trust us Issei? What's bothering you? She asked. That's when Issei almost lets him it out, he took a deep breath and opened his eyes, and everyone saw the fire burning brightly, like a ray of hope in a dark world that was gone, but could be saved. Akendo. I trust you guys enough, but this problem and secret is something that has a very dark and very dangerous origin. He said softly. Akendo was not expecting that at all. He was still a little apprehensive she knew off the bat, but this secret had to be very big for him to not say anything at all about it. She was definitely going to try to get him to tell her, and hopefully some other things when they had the chance. Ice, it seems you are still stubborn as always. Thankfully we came up with a backup plan for that. Susanu said suddenly. That's when Issei's head whipped to him, and Issei marched up to the god and looked at him in the eyes with a quite the glare. Now everyone wondered what was going on with the two of them. He didn't. Did you? Issei asked with bated breath. Susanu's eyes looked at Issei's for a good moment or two. I'm sorry my pupil, but it is time for some help. If you're going through with this, then you best bet he is going to be here to do everything he can to help out, even if that means giving you some new lessons. He said with a chuckle at the end. Issei's eyes softened, then he quickly slumped down on the couch and waited for the inevitable. He wasn't mad about seeing him again, no he was like a brother after all, so he would never want to not see him. It was the fact, he was like the bigger brother, the one who put you on the right path and taught you right when you did the opposite. So he knew this reunion would be tough. What's going on? Who's coming now? Raynor asked impatiently. Everyone now was getting tired of this, what was he hiding? Family? Was all Issei said. Now that made everyone quite shocked, they never expected to meet another person that Issei considered family. It seems they were going too soon. Is he coming now? Issei asked to the gods. Tsukiyomi nodded. We told him shortly before we left, he said he would finish up what he was doing and head over. He said. Issei looked at the god and nodded. It seemed the inevitable was truly here. Soon, everyone at the room saw a magic circle appear. When the guest appeared before everyone, the devils were honestly confused. They weren't expecting it at all. Before anyone could ask any more questions, someone else took it. Issei. The newcomer said suddenly. His voice was refined, with care and honesty. It also had a tone of heart and experience. Issei looked at him and stood up. Brother. It's been too long. He said softly. That's when Issei got a glare from him. Boy. Don't you start going soft on me now. Tell me Issei, what's going on? He responded while looking around the room. Issei knew he was filled in already, and he was just taking the opportunity to mess with him. That's when everyone got a good look at him. To say they were shocked was an understatement. He was a boy. He looked like he was no older than 14. That wasn't the only thing that caused their stupor. It was how he looked and how much power they felt from him. His face was definitely surprising, it didn't have the expression of a young boy. No it was a wisdom-filled gaze that showed just how much experience he had. It was his hair that stuck out the most, it wasn't what you would call normal for a young boy like him. It was multicolored in fact. It was black and green with a blue hue to it. They were in the dark on just who he was no doubt at all. Rainer had enough and was getting ticked off, looking at Issei quickly, she fired off the question they wanted to know so badly. 
Okay say, just who is this guy? You say he's your brother, but he doesn't even look like you. His power is almost non-existent either, who and what he is doing here? She shouted. Issei whipped his head to her, and she instantly knew she was a little rude there. Firstly, he is like a brother to me. We have some history together, about his power. Well. Issei started, but then looked at the boy. Why don't you just explain? Go on and introduce yourself. It's fine, I figured they'd find about you sooner or later, so just get it over with. He said. The boy chuckled, but nonetheless nodded. Well as Issei said, me and him do have a bit of history, and yes, I do consider him like a little brother. He started. They knew that pretty much already. So who are you exactly and why is your power like that? Kalwerner asked. He chuckled and put his finger to his mouth, he definitely was going to have some fun with them. The reason as to why my power is like that is because I'm containing nearly all of it to keep you guys from getting shell-shocked. It is not every day you find something or someone with my kind of power, there are several exceptions though. He said vaguely while looking at Issei. They weren't expecting that, and they honestly didn't believe it. He could tell that just by looking at their faces. How can you expect us to believe it when we feel nothing? We're stronger than you think, prove us wrong. Rainer said loudly. Issei shook his head, that wasn't going to play out well. He wasn't going to hurt them, no, but since they asked for him to show it, he would. He wasn't going to go easy on them either. That's when the boy nodded. Very well, I'll do you one even better. He said suddenly. That surprised them yet again, none of them spoke though. They waited for him to continue. As to the most obvious question of who I am. He started. They definitely had his attention now, and they had a weird feeling when a grin came across his face. My name is something that causes fear to my enemies and all to my allies, and my power is the reason why. I will ask you this once, are you sure you want to know my name? He said with finality. His tone had changed and they knew it, he was serious. However, that didn't stop them. When he saw each and every one of them nod, he chuckled and nodded. When his head rose back up, they saw something different. Something very strange and bizarre. His eyes started to glow faintly, and they were soon hit with a pressing aura that sent each and every one of the devils and fall into the ground on their knees. My name is Shiva the Destroyer. Was all they heard. The whole room felt suffocated. The others could barely breathe, only Issei, Kai, the Shinto gods and Shiva himself were unaffected. It wasn't soon after before Issei cut in. Alright turn it down a bit. Shiva looked at Issei and chuckled. Oh come on Issei. I was having fun. Issei shook his head, and soon after the pressure died down, everyone stared in fear at the destroyer. He had a smile on when Issei spoke up. Don't be afraid of Shiva, he's a very mature and sensible being. Only when the situation calls for it, will he become what his title demands. That helped them calm down a bit, but they were still a little weary. Suddenly Shiva looked to Issei, and everyone knew what was going to be said would be very serious. Are you sure about this Issei? After what happened, I would have thought you wouldn't want anything to do with him. Especially him. Issei looked at the god and sighed. No matter the case, what happened that night and what we learned can never be forgotten. His plans will fail and I will ensure that nothing will stop me until I have his head on a pike. The group was definitely out of the loop on what they were talking about. So are we going back to training him? As of now, your power isn't what it was, even more so, with what they did to you. Did you forget about your own goal to break it? The group was starting to get annoyed and it was Akeno who spoke up first. I'm sorry, but I know this secret isn't for us, but what happened to Issei? Issei sighed and looked at her. A long time ago, I was in quite the predicament, and it was only thanks to Yusaka and her allies that I made it through. Along with numerous other things that happened, my enemies put a seal on me to limit my power. What kind of seal? Issei looked to Kalawarner and explained. It's designed to compress my power limits and make it near impossible to use my true powers, currently I am only at 25% of what I used to be. The only way to break it is through extreme force by training. Also, a strong emotional trauma that enables something like a switch forcefully, allowing the current of power to run at full capacity, in the process the influx of power theoretically would shatter the seal in a single instant due to the overwhelming energy passing through it. So who are you going to call to guard this town? Everyone heard Shiva ask the question and wondered what the answer was. Issei sighed and looked at his brother. I will call a few friends. One is definitely who you're thinking of, he wouldn't be more happy to guard this town if it meant getting stronger to defeat him. You and I both know that his fury for that man is unparalleled. Shiva nodded. Who is this that you guys are talking about? Issei looked to Ria's as she asked that. A very close friend of mine. He's a little bit of a battle maniac, but don't let that scare you. He can be very genuine and kind when hostility is non-existent. Don't keep them waiting Issei, call him here so we can get a move on. We have quite a bit to do if we are going through this. 
Susanoo's patience was running thin, and Issei knew it. That's when Issei nodded. Once they saw Issei raise a circle to his ears, a few words that couldn't be heard were exchanged, and suddenly it disappeared. He's on his way. About five minutes later, everyone heard a knock on the door. Once Issei told them to come in, once again they were shocked, all of them except the gods and the two fallen. Both Kalwerner and Raynor widened their eyes and jumped up, surprising the devils. You know him. It was Riaz who asked that. Issei, on the other hand, seemed to expect it, he already knew that those two would recognize him. Of course we know him. Who is he then? Their patience was running thin. His name is Bali. Issei was the one who said that. He then turned to the fallen angels in the room. The reason they know him is that he is affiliated with the Grigori. Specifically, Azazel himself took him in. Way to shorten my life story Issei. Who is he then? Bali smirked and rose his hand. Allow me Issei. Suddenly behind him they witnessed his sacred gear form, to say they were surprised was an understatement. The White Dragon Emperor. Suddenly the room got a whole lot darker, or it just seemed that way. Issei and Bali were having a silent stare-off that seemed to make the distance between the two uneasy. The group wasn't sure if a fight was to go down or not. It seemed there was some unfinished business between the two. Issei. Issei looked to Bali and with a stern voice he replied. Not now, we'll discuss it later. Suddenly the wings on Vali's back started to glow, and a voice emanated from them. Issei Haidu, one of the most unknown players in this game of chess that is life. Surely you have not decided to take action once more, and what are the consequences if you do so? Everyone was surprised to hear a regal and prideful voice speak. They could only assume it was Dragon himself who resided within Vali. What happened next would make them all remember this night. They thought Issei would snidely make a comeback or lash out at the dragon for intruding. However, Issei just sighed and said the words that opened everyone's eyes. Albion, you are right. The consequences of this whole plan are enough to weigh the odds against us. However, we are at crucial point in time now, we cannot run anymore. No more hiding, no more games. No more time wasted, thinking of what would have happened if we finished it on that dreadful day. If we don't do something, they will find us. So we strike when the time is right. If it comes down to it, I will break the seal and unleash the very abomination they sealed away inside of me, from fear. If it should be that way, they will only get to see it once more before I completely staple their fear once and for all into their bones, so that they always remember it. No one was interrupting the conversation that the dragon was having, they knew to have respect for the being that was the vanishing dragon. It seems you are right. We can no longer hide, we cannot wait around. Very well, what is your plan? The dragon's question was heard loud and clear, and everyone looked at Issei for his response. I cannot speak too much of it, due to the others in the room. This is way above their pay grade, I'm going to pay a visit to the faction's leaders and brief them on the matter. Every one ounce of help we can get will only increase our chances. It's time the world knew. Vali the reason why I called you here, is you're going to be watching the city for Kakabiel. Vali narrowed his eyes, then he chuckled. So you've decided on to take out the old bat. Now that caused an uproar. Why did Vali make it seem like you actually know Kakabiel personally? Issei sighed and took a deep breath. This was something he wanted to stay out of their ears. Don't ask any more about it, just know yes. Me, Vali and the warmonger does have a bit of history. His tone was enough to quiet them down, and they knew better to press on. He suddenly turned to the group. You guys heard enough, for now, I want you guys to get ready, we'll leave tomorrow. Be prepared and make sure you get enough sleep, this will be a very long and tough trip. Don't take what I say for granted, or you'll be sorry. It seemed he wanted them to leave, so without any fuss they did, and before he knew it, Issei was alone with Vali, Shiva, Kai, and the Shinto Trinity. Now that they are gone, let's get down to the down to the real stuff. It was Vali. Issei looked around and started to speak. What do you guys want to know? How are you exactly planning on taking them on? With your skill, he would still be a match, and don't get me started on her. That seal needs to break before you take her on. Not to mention the rest of them, and the others they have. It was Shiva who asked that. Issei looked at him. We're all going to train, we have to be at our peak when the moment hits us in the face. After I'm done with them, me and you are going to have a few of our old training spars Shiva. Vali smirked as he heard that. So once again you're going to attempt to control the power deep inside of you. A lot of change is in the air tonight, you were right. Time is up, and with so much to lose how can we not do everything in our power to get stronger. I'm done here, let me know if you need anything else. Issei looked at Bali and spoke. Where are you going? Bali looked back and smirked. Where do you think? The night's still young. Issei shook his head and laughed as Bali walked out. With him gone, Shiva said his piece. It seems we have a lot of work to do. 
be ready to say, when you get back, we will begin in our training, and you should already know holding back isn't an option. Let's see if you have what it takes. Shiva smiled and waved as he disappeared out of thin air. Issei turned to Kai and the Shintos. So is there anything else we should know or anything we can do before we head out? Issei thought about it for a moment, then widened his eyes. They could help him a bit. Do things, one now and one after we learn what I want to know. The gods were a little puzzled. Take a look at my seal again, I want to experiment with it. They all blinked, but only Amaterasu spoke. Very well, summon it. Issei sighed and his shirt came off. Suddenly with very little effort, a large seal that encompassed his torso and rolled around to his back formed, it intersected at very unique areas, to create what looked like a makeshift maze. Amaterasu started to speak. It's still pretty strong, no signs of major damage or anything close. Just barely fading. Issei shook his head and began to work. His hair turned darker as his demonic energy use was increased. Though the seal was resisting. The Matarasu examined the seal again, and it had no problem resisting the energy. Try using your holy energy. Issei nodded and soon everyone felt the holy presence in the room. The seal seemed to fade just a bit, he felt like he could use just a bit more of the energy versus the demonic. Maybe he could do something with that, who knows. It seems the seal can't resist it that much, it weakens just a bit. Issei turned to her and responded instantly. I need you to take me somewhere. The gods looked confused. Why us? Why not just teleport yourself there? Issei chuckled. It's far away, and the person I'm going to talk to will want to spar no doubt, so I need to conserve my energy. Susanoo looked skeptical. What do you mean far away? How far? Issei looked at the gods. It's the home of a different pantheon, one pretty much on the other side of the world. A lot of energy would be required to teleport. Three gods could do it easily. The gods were now completely focused, even Kai had his complete attention. They all knew, he was hiding more, and there was only more to come. But Pantheon? Issei chuckled. Reek. Issei was serious, and they knew it. So who is it then? We're going to go straight to the throne room and interrupt whatever it is they are doing. It can wait, this will definitely announce my presence yet again, and once the little birdie gets wind, they will know we are moving. So it's time for the brute force method. They all shook their heads, but he was serious. So they complied and a large circle appeared around the Shinto. Be careful Issei. Issei looked at Kai and nodded. Then he stepped into the circle. Scene break Mount Olympus. In the large ornate room, that had ivory pillars running along the walls of the structure, sat twelve beings in their respective thrones. In the center, sat a little girl who was watching a fire. This was just a normal day for them, they had already started their meeting, and wasn't expecting anything out of the blue to happen. They were wrong. Before they knew it, their meeting was interrupted by a large magic circle, and they were instantly all on guard. A single voice spoke out the newcomers. Who dares to interrupt us? Issei knew that voice all too well. Zeus. A man that had an ego the size of his godly form, he would be generally respectful to a person of his stature. However, he has bitten off more than he can chew a few times. So he ultimately knew his place. As soon as he saw the other gods, his tone instantly changed. The Matarasu, Susanu, and Tsukiyomi. A rare visit, one that no doubt has reason. What or who have you come for? As soon as he said that, the trinity split apart to show Issei. The look on every god's face was enough to tell Issei that they never really expected to see him again. Zeus had no words to say, if he even had some. He wouldn't speak until Issei made his reason known. So the brat returns. That voice Issei knew as well, whether he liked it or not, he knew what it meant. Ares. It seems time hadn't made you any wiser than before. Maybe it's good you have a pee for a brain. Issei said that with a smirk. It definitely got the god riled up and ready to go. Ares was about to jump off his throne, but Zeus put his hand up. However, Issei spoke up. Zeus it's fine. I won't kill him, I can use him as a training dummy. After we'll talk about why we're here. Zeus relented and nodded. Ares instantly jumped down and made his size equal to Issei. He held a gigantic baseball bat with a cocky grin. Let's see how much stronger you've become Runt, I hope you're going to enjoy this beatdown. No, you're going to enjoy your ass being handed to you, on a silver platter. Ares didn't like that and took a swing. Issei easily rolled out of the way. Ares saw Issei pull out his sword and backed up to avoid a thrust at him. The second thrust Issei made was sidestepped, as Issei came down in a vertical slash. His sword met Ares' bat. Ares used his leg to kick Issei backwards, and decided to try something else. Suddenly Issei was staring at a gigantic broadsword that definitely looked mean. He didn't want to get hit by that weapon, but it made it a bit easier on him. Ares needed more time to swing it. Issei quickly leapt backwards as the large sword sailed past where he was. 
That's when Issei sped forwards and slashed the abdomen of the god, and backed up yet again to avoid another strike. Issei was honestly not wanting to waste time, so he decided it was time to end it. He charged in yet again, but this time he jumped over the blade as it passed under him. Landing on the ground he instantly slammed his sword through the god's stomach. Using his momentum, he kicked off of the god and landed in front of him. Ares wasn't focused on Issei anymore, he was focused on pulling out the sword, and didn't see Issei leaping right above him, with another sword in his hand. Aimed, for his eye. Golden liquid sprayed out as Issei's sword went through easily. It seemed the spar was over, but one thing remained in the gods' minds. Why was he there? The Greek pantheon looked to Issei in anticipation. They needed to know why he was in front of them. Issei, please don't keep us waiting. We know a lot of stuff was said and done, but for you to return unexpectedly has us on the edge of our feet. Why are you here? It was Poseidon who asked that. Issei looked at the old god, it was clearly present on his face. The shock and disbelief he has, this man had seen a ton in his years, and no doubt the one thing he never thought he'd see again was him. I will explain everything, but first something needs to happen. He then looked at Apollo, who didn't know what to think. He larries, he needs to be in state where he can think straight and understand the complications of what I'm about to tell you. The young god nodded and hopped off his throne. Walking over to Ares, the damage was clearly visible, Issei really did a number on him. The magic that was still lingering in his wounds was potent and destructive. However, to Apollo it was nothing for him to handle. Ares' body was covered in a light green glow. Before everyone knew it, Ares was back on his feet and sat on his throne. They weren't speaking up, they wanted him to start. He cleared his throat and began. I need your help in a very serious matter, one that if ignored will cause a very dangerous situation. The look on the gods' faces said it all, he had their full undivided attention. What is going on? Zeus asked. Issei took a deep breath. There is a group that is very dangerous. It wants cause the end of the world. The energy that flared in the throne room was great. Who are they boy? What are their plans? Zeus said loudly. Issei shook his head. This isn't a group that you can easily disperse, the members are very powerful. The leaders even more so. Its name is the Cow's Brigade, it is led by Office, who has gathered the evil dragons that are still alive. Her goal is to defeat Great Red. They were definitely surprised, but Issei owes his hand to continue. That is not all, there is another group in there. Who is from the old Satan faction, the main one of my focus is my brother. Riz of him live in Lucifer, he wishes to unseal the monster that could end us all. Now the looks turn grave. You don't mean. Poseidon said that, it was obvious he couldn't believe it. Yes, the Trahixa, 666, the very monster, that God sealed away, and the beast that can end this world if their plan isn't stopped. What do you need? Issei looked at Zeus sharply. I need you to be ready to act with no hesitation, they are going to make their presence known soon. I also need to you to teleport me to him. They didn't look too surprised, Zeus nodded and raised his hand. Before Issei knew it, a beam of light hit him. He reappeared in a place that looked to be a cave. To his right, sat a river that was black as night. A boat sat docked near the shore, with what appeared to be a cloaked man as it ferryman. Issei paid barely any attention and just stepped onto the boat, with no regard for the entity that used it. Any other person who had the need to be in this place wouldn't dare disrespect the ferryman. The moment the cloaked hood rose upwards and the eyes behind it saw who it was, opened wide. Issei Haidu, it has been a while. Issei just rose an eyebrow. Unfortunately I don't have time to talk Charon. I need to be taken across the river to your master. It was a demand, and Charon knew that. The look in the boy's eyes were hardened, not taking no for an answer. So he did just that. It was only a little bit longer, and they had docked in front of a gigantic palace, decorated with blacked walls and skulls at various points. Charon didn't get to say anything as Issei quickly got off and was already on his way to the door, nobody was stopping him with his audience with Hades. Before he knew it, the god himself was standing before Issei with eyes of shock and confusion. Issei was in his home for a reason, he knew that much. Issei, it is a very rare moment for you to visit me, get straight to the point. Why are you here? Hades heard the chuckle, and his first sentence sent a chill down the god's spine. I need your help. But what exactly? Issei stared down the god and spoke. There will be a battle of godly proportions that will take place in the near future. The enemies we are facing are moving slowly, but it will only get worse. I have a feeling something big is about to go down. Hades looked Issei dead in the eye and started to speak. Who is it exactly and what are they planning? Once Issei explained it to him, he understood what it meant. Of course I will lend my full support, just let me know when you need me. Issei nodded and must have thought that was all. However, when Issei asked his next question it sparked his interest. I want to fight you. Alright kid, I'll go around with you. All out, till the other one gives up. 
as Say nodded and Hades let out a bit chuckle. Before they knew it, they were standing outside the palace with a barrier above them. Before we start, why did you want to fight me? Issei chuckled. I want to test my strength on a powerful being. Hades seemed to accept it and nodded. It was then Issei rushed in. His fist met the steel edge of Hades' pitchfork though. It seemed Hades was holding back quite a bit on the boy, and for good reason too. This person who was known as Issei Haidu was like a nephew to him. He was one of the first mentors he had, and he showed him a lot over the years. It came as one hell of a slap in the face the first time he met Issei. Back then, he wasn't nothing but a broken child in tattered clothes, with eyes that glowed with such hatred and the will to burn the world till there wouldn't be a single ash left. Though, Hades could say now that Issei was matured. He also noticed his determination hadn't diminished at all either. He didn't know much of what happened to Issei as of late, he had missed out on a good bit. However, the man standing before him was no longer a child. His eyes held a lot of emotions, and it amazed the god. He saw what he never thought he would, his determination was tempered, but Hades saw something else. Something so intriguing, he wondered what he went through to change him like that. Hades saw that he was scared, but it was odd. He wasn't scared of him, or anything of that nature, no, it was more like Issei was scared to fail at something, and he could tell whatever this was was very close to him, and he couldn't fail. This man would lead a devastating path of carnage to get what he wanted, and anyone in his way would pay the reaper's price. He just hoped that Issei wasn't pushed hard enough to tap into his true power. He knew about the seal and with Issei's power, if something serious enough were to happen, that would make Issei go into his full demonic form, if by some miracle that he could retain his senses while transformed, he could shatter that seal with barely strain. If that happened, the sorry bastard would have unleashed their worst nightmare and would think that they were staring death in the face. Hades was knocked out of his thoughts when Issei swung his sword, with barely any effort, it was blocked. Issei jumped back, it was time to step it up. The quick bolt of lightning shot straight towards Hades, who merely raised his hand, and the bolt was absorbed into darkness. Come on Issei, I've been holding back this whole time. I want to see what you can really do. Issei heard his roar and dodged just in time to see Hades's pitchfork slam into the ground. He had no choice but to take to the air as a rapid wave of darkness started to expand from the point of impact. This was something else for Issei, he knew Hades was just getting started too. That meant this battle would drag on for a while. However, Issei wasn't about to give in. Hades saw the sword that was swung at him and blocked it yet again, however this time Issei swept the god's legs out from underneath him, causing him to stumble backwards. That was the perfect opportunity. Hades soon felt sharp pain as he looked down to see Issei's elbow in his gut. Issei followed it up by giving him a kick to the ribs that sent him flying a short distance away. Issei though didn't get another chance to get in close though. He was bracing himself as Hades started to power up a bit more, Issei was staring at the cracking and floating pieces of their battleground. Suddenly Hades set off a massive explosion that knocked Issei back several feet, and when he looked up, he saw Hades covered in a dark ethereal glow, with a purple hue to it. It definitely made an intimidating presence. Issei decided to power up, and before Hades knew it, Issei's hands turned demonic, and his body was covered in lightning. Hades quickly sidestepped a punch from Issei and smashed him with his pitchfork, sending him skidding backwards, which only caused Issei to rush in again, this time Hades jumped back as Issei's fist slammed into the ground, and a bolt of lightning erupted underneath him and shot upwards. That's when Issei sensed the massive power surge. He looked up to the god to see him gathering energy in his hands, then he shot a massive energy blast that burst into smaller ones that rained down on the ground. Issei wasted no time, a large dome of ice formed around him, acting as a makeshift shield to protect him from the onslaught. As soon as it stopped, Issei burst out of the ice dome and soared towards Hades, that attack caused Hades a bit of fatigue, and he would need a bit to recover to be able to use something like that again. Issei shot out an ice spear that charged at his opponent, he wasted no time in charging in as well. Hades was left with a dilemma, he had to choose, so he chose Issei. Hades swatted the spear away, but felt his jaw clench as Issei's fist hit it. As Hades was sent away, Issei decided to add insult to injury and sent off several lightning bolts that all hit their target. Hades didn't know what to think, it wasn't like he was at full power or even nearing his limit. Just that fact Issei was already this strong, and he knew the boy had more power and more abilities up his sleeve. This was a monster disguised as a man, one that was cunning and unforgiving. However, Hades would not let Issei get the best of him. That's when his pitchfork started to glow with intensity, even if the aura was blackened as the night itself, Issei could still sense just how dense the energy was that the god was building. Issei didn't hesitate and braced himself, he didn't know what Hades was planning. Suddenly a bolt of dark energy was shot towards him as he quickly dodged it. Hades then started to shoot them at him rapidly, Issei was expecting that though. 
He placed his hands on the ground, and a burst of blue energy shot outwards, as a large ice wall formed in front of him. The ice wall held up against Hades' assault for quite a while, until Issei noticed small fractures starting to form. At that moment, something unexpected happened. It came as a complete surprise to Issei as he watched the ice wall shatter, and Hades bursting through it, and saw the pitchfork in motion. Hades had thrown it, and it came so fast and the timing was perfect. He had no choice but take it head on. However, it was already too close to him, so he let it hit him. Hades watched as Issei as the pitchfork stabbed him in the gut. Issei fell on his knees, but Hades didn't move. He wasn't about to take the win, this was a friendly spar, albeit maybe one on a god's level. This was not a death match, and Hades knew Issei wasn't done. His suspicions were proved true as Issei grabbed the pitchfork and pulled it out easily. He didn't stand up just yet, and he didn't give up either. Hades soon felt a presence that shocked him, for many reasons. His view on the man before him was now a blank slate, whatever he knew about the boy from all that time ago, was completely gone, and useless. He knew something drastic had happened to him for his personality to make such a change. As he watched the white flame flicker to life and curl around his wounds as if it had a mind of its own, Hades realized his potential was now through the roof. The holy presence was clearly sensed the moment the fire came to life. However, this brought up complications for their fight. This was the light versus the dark now, even if Hades wasn't a devil, it was still the very nature of his power that worried him. He didn't know how it would turn out. Issei quickly stood up as his wounds were healed, his hands were alight in a blaze of white glory. Hades watched as a hand was raised, and a gigantic swirling fireball formed in the palm of Issei's hand. As Issei threw it, Hades responded with his own attack. Slamming his pitchfork on the ground, he watched a wave of darkness shot towards the incoming fireball. The fireball collided with the darkness as they sparked with ferocity, and the resulting explosion knocked both of them backwards. Issei quickly got back up, and his fist met Hades's pitchfork. Issei used his free hand to create a small fireball and slammed it into Hades' ribs. It seemed their battle was about to end as Hades powered up a good bit and Issei had already started to gather his power. Hades stopped for a moment as he noticed quite the unique energy signature. It was something completely else and as he looked at Issei, he was in stupor. Issei was covered in light blue ethereal glow with all his wings out. Hades knew the moment he saw the blue glow that it was more to it. He didn't know if Issei was conscious of what he was doing or not, but Hades noticed the very ground Issei walked on started to get covered in a bit of frost before melting away. The very temperature of the air was enough to tell Hades that it wasn't a normal ability. Issei was probably too focused on the battle to notice those things, that's what he assumed. His train of thought was lost as Issei rushed at him, sword in hand. The pressure Issei emitted along with his strength made Hades stumble backwards a bit, Issei didn't wait and walked forwards. What surprised Hades again was when Issei slammed his sword in the ground and continued towards him. Nothing came at him, and he looked up to see a hand outstretched towards him. He didn't hesitate and grabbed it. The spar was over. Morning. As Issei woke up the day after, he couldn't think too much on what today would have in store for him. Before he knew it, he was waiting downstairs for them to arrive. He hoped they were ready for it. Before he knew it, everyone was there. They were waiting for him to begin. The day marks the day you will all change, the place you are going to will challenge you mentally and physically. Make no mistake, this trip will be hell for you. Well let's go then and get it over with. Issei turned to Raynor and chuckled. Just because I trained you and Kalwarner a bit, doesn't mean you won't get off easily. They will break you and make you rebuild the pieces of your personality back together from scratch. I said both mental and physical, you have no idea what is in store for you. Issei didn't say anything else and waved his hand, suddenly a portal appeared. One by one they all went through and came out on the other side to see a sight that they wouldn't forget. They were staring at a forest that rested beneath the mountain. The Keno gasped as she realized where they were. However, she couldn't believe it. She needed Issei's confirmation. Issei. Are we where I think we are? Issei turned to her and gave a sad smile. You are correct Akeno. He turned to the forest and spoke again. Meet Akigahara, otherwise known as the Sea of Trees or the Suicide Forest. Before I send you on your way, I will explain a few things. 1. Do not underestimate the spirits that reside here. Treat them with respect, and they will do the same. Don't take what they say for granted. Look for the hidden truth in their messages and you will prevail. If you don't listen carefully to what they tell you, this place will be your grave. Issei didn't waste any time and walked towards the edge of the forest. When everyone was behind him, he turned around and spoke. This is where I leave you. This path in front of you will lead you to my training grounds. Remember heed my warnings or else. Issei suddenly vanished and they were left alone, with nothing else to do. They walked into the forest. However, before they even got a few feet in, they were met with a ghostly entity, it seemed to beckon them to come. 
As they got closer, it spoke in a harsh and cold voice. Welcome to the forest, I am the gatekeeper. Before you continue you must answer a question. None of them spoke and he spoke again. What is a team and what is teamwork? That question hit them hard, it was definitely a test. Only the right answer would be accepted, and they couldn't give a half-baked answer. Bria's ignorantly tried to answer it. The team is a group of people who work together, and their teamwork is what comes of it. The spirit just shook his head. It seems you are not ready. Any other tries. He looked around and saw Kiba step up. The team is a group of people who stand together through storm and fire, till the ends of the world. Their teamwork is the weapon they created from their bonds. The spirit seemed a bit appeased. You can thank this young man here, even if his answer wasn't the full truth, it was closer to it than any other answers that could have been said. The answer I was looking is this. A team is group of people who know everyone's strengths and weaknesses, and are able to cover the very same weaknesses. They wouldn't hesitate to take a blow for their teammate, and their teamwork is their ultimate weapon. Everyone seemed shocked at the response, suddenly the spirit stepped back. Now that you know the truth, you are ready to enter. May the spirits have mercy on you. They were now walking the path, ready to train. However, they didn't know that the spirits weren't done with them just yet. Only time would tell how they would come out of the forest, forever changed. That's it guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. That was the whole stuff. With that. Take care.